All right. Welcome, everybody, to our, I don't know, I think 13th meeting. I'm not sure, Michael. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so i um, like to uh, welcome everybody. Uh, we have our committee members uh, and then our guests, Roger Wickland and Barbara Triplett. Um, committee members, uh, do you want to go ahead and do our conflict of interest declarations? I don't Michael believe Beachley. I have any. Michael Beachley, I have no conflicts. Tom Seip, I have no conflicts. Susan Schomburg, I have no conflicts. Bill Miller, I have no conflicts. Okay, great. And I assume we'll have Wyatt here in a moment. So we have a, once again, a very full agenda. Um, I'm, uh, I actually just updated it because I put the wrong people on article two update. Um, so there's a newer version up there. And I'm recommending that we uh, wait on Article 7 until the next meeting that's on subcommittees because we have such a full agenda today. And some of us has been busy on other on other articles. So, um, so we'll, if there are no objections, we'll postpone Article 7 discussion until next time. Okay. So uh, approval of minutes. Did everybody have a chance to look at the minutes from February 2nd and uh, February 16th meetings? Okay, were there any comments or um, uh, suggestions on the minutes, clarifications on the minutes for either of those? Okay, uh, hearing none, uh, the minutes for the February 2nd and February 16th meetings are approved as uh, amended and um, presented in this meeting. So thank you, Michael, for a huge amount of work on that. And for everybody who's there, I think you all know that in the archive section of the NCAC website, you can get to any of the meetings with our agendas, our minutes, our uh, videos of our meetings, which can be really handy and, um, and view those. So I'll get these filed, Michael, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Wyatt, you can see the top of your head. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. My internet has been out. Uh-oh. I hear you guys are having some weather. Well, yeah. So uh, do you want to state your conflict or of interest or lack thereof, Wyatt? I have no conflicts. Okay, thank you. So chair's report. I know this has been a really, really intense time. Uh, we have all spent hours and hours and hours um, during this phase. And I want to just thank all of you for, for this. Um, I, I think this meeting and the next about three weeks are going to continue to be intense, but we're really making a lot of headway, I think, getting a lot of very positive feedback from people about what we're doing. Um, just almost, um, uh, I guess it was the following Tuesday after our last uh, meeting, I met with the executive board and Michael was there as well. And they gave us an hour actually to present various uh, aspects of the bylaws amendments. and. We're generally quite positive about it. So we, we got excellent feedback. And um, as we go through, we can we can present any uh, that we think is pertinent in terms of suggestions. But like off, um, for our Article 4 officers, which really pertains to them, they, uh, they, they liked what we were suggesting in, in general. And, um, and then we had some additional feedback afterward on some of the detail. So, um, I think uh, I just kind of want to query you. How are you feeling about how things are going? Do you feel like uh, this is going a little too fast? Are, are you okay with the pace? Uh, at this point, we have a feedback session tomorrow on meetings. We have a feedback session on Wednesday on executive boards, Article 6. And then we don't have anything, I don't believe, until the following Friday. I was actually going to bring the schedule up to look at. Yeah, so um, can everybody see the schedule? Okay, um, so we have uh, um, meetings on Saturday the 4th and then we don't have anything, gosh, is this right? 
Okay. So then we, we actually have six days until the eighth on Friday night when we have the second members feedback session and then executive boards on Wednesday, the 13th. Um, and it's likely to be a fairly short one. I'm guessing we'll go through that article today. Um, and then subcommittees on Saturday, the 16th, which will be the day after our next bylaws committee meeting. And then Wednesday, the 20th is other uh, feedback, other bylaws provisions. We have something just earmarked for the 23rd if we need it. Um, uh, and we'll we'll figure that out as we as we go along. So how are you how are you feeling about stuff? Anyone? Uh, particularly you at Tom and Wyatt, who are <laughs> just extremely busy. And Tom, please uh, unmute yourself because I can't hear you. <clears throat> I'm concerned about uh consolidating what we've what's been decided uh, mm -hmm. and I need to understand whether or not the latest uh, presentation on each subject reflects what should go into the next revision of the bylaws. So I'll need to, have con I need to have confirmation on that so I can start yeah. making that migration. So today, my, my intent, and you guys can discuss this, but is that after each of the feedback sessions, we'll bring those articles back into the committee and talk about any suggestions that were made in the articles and then have a final version. So in the meeting folder for today are some updated ones. Uh, you did, you and Wyatt did article three, but um, we've done, we've updated articles two, eight, and nine from comments from the feedback session that we'll talk about today. And then um, article four officers as well has been updated based on the feedback session for us to talk about today. So what I'm hoping, Tom, is that as of today, we can say this is it to go into the document um, and, and accept yeah, those good. changes. Does that sound good? Uh, today is okay, yeah. Okay, and then, okay, <laughs> well, hopefully we'll get there. We <laughs> will get there. Um, and then, you know, since uh, Article 3 will have another feedback session, then we'll, of course, come back and discuss that after that feedback session. And, and and do updates. So, um, and if we need to, if we feel like any of these sessions are bringing in just way too much controversy and concern, then we would could always schedule bringing one of those articles back as well in that last slot. Um, and we could add a slot if we had to. At this point, I'm I'm just based on the three sessions we've had. I'm feeling pretty comfortable that we won't have to do that except for article three, but we'll find out tomorrow's a big one too. So, so, um, how, does that answer your question, Tom? And does uh, that sound that's, satisfactory? Yeah, that's, that's concern. Number one, concern. Number two is we have a very compressed schedule. We're going to be hard pressed to, if anything goes off the rails, mm -hmm. we're not going to make that schedule. Yeah, no, you're right. So hopefully we can, we can continue doing it. And, um, you know, I so far it's been intense. That's why I'm kind of asking. Uh, but at least we're going to get a five day break <laughs> between uh, tomorrow and Friday. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of the other articles are are somewhat simpler to do. But you know, I, I, that's the other thing I wanted to mention is in the executive board meeting we talked about timing for bringing uh, the bylaws to the membership and. Uh, have a tentative agreement that we will present what we have at the April general meeting um, and then schedule a special meeting for May 11th, I believe, Saturday, May 11th, to just do bylaws. Uh, and um, we haven't set a time. I think we were thinking somewhere around either 9.30 or doing an afternoon one and as long as it takes, right? There'll be more uh, following parliamentary procedure, it'll be a regular meeting, but uh, just to talk about bylaws, a single topic meeting. So we would be able to make some changes between the meeting where we present the draft and then also at the at the meeting on uh, on May 11th to be able to get you know motions to make amendments and that kind of thing more. How, how do you see that uh, May meeting? I mean, uh, I'm sorry, the April meeting, Nancy. Um, some of these individual articles have taken two and three hours. Um, if so we're the, going through the entire bylaws, I, uh, it's the idea that we would do 
the whole thing, just like we've done all these in, years in May, before. yes. In April, they said they wanted to give us about a half hour to just go through the bylaws, um, not really to do a full-fledged discussion, but to just go through it. And in May, that may be a three-hour meeting. And we would go through article by article, but one vote at the end, hopefully. I mean, Robert's Rules talks about in a amending the bylaws process that if you are doing a complete revamp like we are, um, you can t take it section by section, article by article to get discussion and then and have hear any amendments, but then you you have an overall motion at the end. So uh, Michael's going to teach some parliamentary procedure. We're going to have a document out there. And Michael, you said at the executive board meeting you have a document, but I haven't seen it on the website. It's, um, it's actually on the web uh, uh, page. Uh, okay, I'll look again. And if you um, let me take a quick look, it's right there on the first page of um, uh, of records and documents. Whatever, what's the name of that uh, particular page? Oh, the archive section. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. yeah. Uh, yeah. It's you in there, right, right down to the bottom, and it's right there. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So it it will be more structured. So people are going to have to, uh, if they want to amend something, they will say, "I move to amend." Article two, section three, or whatever to to read, blah 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 blah, and then there will be a second, and if somebody agrees with that, anybody agrees with it, and then discussion, and then a vote. So it will be a formal parliamentary procedure kind of operation, and um, as opposed to the feedback sessions. And the beauty of parliamentary procedures is that the mi minority, you know, everybody gets a chance to voice their opinion, but the majority to vote to rule. So, so that's kind of the procedure. And yes, it could be an, end up being a long meeting. We're hoping that by the time the feedback sessions go through that, you know, a lot of these issues will be resolved. But I know that there could be people who haven't paid attention up to now and suddenly realize, oh, I want to hear more about this. Uh, but it will be a, a more structured kind of a thing. I'm optimistic. I, I really think we can do it. But um, if, if you guys feel like there are concerns, you know, they, the other option is waiting to the June meeting, but I, I hate to do that. Uh, you know, I, I think we can get through this this schedule. And, and how Tom, you're vote, looking dubious. How will the voting be done? Uh, by a motion. Uh, so as chair, I will make a, a motion to approve the <laughs> bylaws, the revised bylaws as presented and then can speak to that and then there will be discussion article by article i'm, I'm just trying to picture the the counting and the determination of who's entitled to oh you mean technically yeah it'll be done through a poll through um through a zoom poll we'll have the questions uh set up ahead of time and luckily jeff is very adept at doing editing during this kind of thing so if there are any amendments that are made and, and passed, then that is what becomes the document, right? So if, if somebody makes a motion to amend a section of the bylaws to, to read such and such, and it's approved by the membership, then that's what becomes the new wording immediately. And so amendments take precedent over the main motion. And, and so we found out when we were in the membership feedback session, uh, Jeff discovered that we can actually get everybody's individual votes, and uh, which we didn't realize we could do. And so I checked with Sarah. One of the questions I had for Sarah was, can we do that? It's come up in our Article 5 meetings part. It's come up in Article 4 under elections. Um, can we have private confidential voting because it can be intimidating for people sometimes to know that their vote could be out there publicly. And she checked with county council and the answer was no, it has to be public. So um, I don't know what we would have done if Zoom didn't have that capability, but uh, it does have to be public. So, so luckily with Zoom, we can get those counts very quickly as long as we get the right question asked in the poll. And, and so the main motion should be fine. It's just, uh, you know, motions to amend, and you could have a motion to amend the amendment, right? I mean, this can go on. So, uh, but Michael will be there as the parliamentarian. I can assist him. Um, so it's, 
it, it will be interesting. It may just go right through, right? Uh, it could be that we're gonna we're getting all the interest in the feedback sessions, and it could be it won't. Sure. I mean, I guess that's probably not saying anything that you don't already know, but <laughs> so, but, you know, I, I, I think, uh, I'm optimistic it's going, it's going to make it, but if you guys, uh, is, it sounds like you're quite concerned, Tom, I, and I realize oh. you're dealing with article three, which is, I can understand uh, why, but with all the feedback you're getting. But. No, it's mostly the uh, logistics of that. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, you know, I've been in okay. situations where the document was meant to be done, and then it was done ten years later. So yes, you know, it yes. happens. <laughs> yes, yeah. We're we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, there's policies and procedures, but that's for a future future meeting. So or so. So uh, okay. one more one more uh, logistical thing about that meeting. Uh -huh. I, I assume we'll probably have live editing. Mm -hmm. We'll have to. Okay. We'll have to. We'll so have to. So I will be the live editor. That would be great, Tom. Thank you okay. for volunteering for that. You <laughs> are. That would people, be terrific. Uh, yeah, people. Because we'll we'll need to show the the red line as yeah. the motion's made, right? And um, that yeah. would be terrific if you could do that. Yeah, I'll figure out how to do that. Probably it'll have to be in Word rather than PowerPoint, but I think we'll, so. We'll, yeah. figure, we'll figure that out. Yeah. And we we could actually, even though we're presenting from a PowerPoint slide, we could you could just share a Word document for the for the amendment if there is one. Okay, I'll work on that. Okay. I appreciate that. Time. Okay. Any other uh questions or how are you feeling about things or any other technical or other questions about how things are going? Okay, I realize it's been a ton, and I will say I've gotten quite a bit of feedback from various people that even if they don't agree with everything we're doing, they really admire the process and the amount of effort that all of us are taking. Um, I am very uh, appreciative and proud of each and every one of you. It's been just a, a marvelous uh, experience, and I also very much appreciate the community members, the UNESCO and CAC members who have been attending our meetings and giving us feedback uh, in between meetings as well as uh, during the meetings. So it's that's been so important. It's it's really made a difference on how we've gone forward. Yeah, I've learned a lot. Yeah, I think we all have, right? So, okay, so that was kind of it for my report. But mark your calendars for May eleventh. The officers didn't want to commit to that. I think they want to see how things are going, but please at least make sure you're you're available for May, May 11th, Saturday, May 11th. Um, and I, it's before the farmer's market starts. Apparently that's a big deal too. And, and we should talk about whether we should try it for morning or afternoon because that wasn't really discussed. Um, um, we'll see. Okay, uh, bylaws article. Well, actually, feedback session review and suggestions. How are you feeling about how the feedback sessions are going? We learned a lot in feedback session one about things not to do, things to do, and polls and different things. But uh, feedback session two was on members, and feedback session three on, of course, on um, officers. So I think feedback session two went amazingly smoothly, considering how controversial it was. Uh, we actually finished in two hours and 20 minutes. I was figuring five hours easy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we did we did decide some things and we did expose some uh, arguments one way or another on the, on the remaining issue. Uh, well, what I think is the remaining issue. <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. see. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think we learned a lot and I think it, I think it went well. Okay. Anyone else have any comments? I find them very helpful, Nancy. Okay, thank you, Wyatt. Anything I can do differently in how we organize them no. um, in terms of running, facilitating the meetings or anything? Two okay. things Two things that strike me. Um, one is uh, that there is a decided um, concern about who's in and who's not in, membership issues. And I, frankly, I'm not sure how we're going to resolve that, but I think um, we're we're coming close. Uh, and I'm and I'm uh, pleased that 
uh, everybody has their input and that they understand that we're seeking uh, some accommodation uh, for the best uh, uh, for the best outcome for the organization. The second thing is is that I am struck and uh, very pleased at how polite and um, mm -hmm. respectful and uh, that that all of the membership is uh, that, but most importantly, that they have a great deal of confidence in what it is that we're doing. And that's a big deal. That is a real big deal because when we go to present this and uh, there is uh, some differ differences in opinions, then um, the confidence that the organization has in us, I think will help to carry the day. That's, that's my impression of how things are going. Okay, thank you, Michael. I, I get similar impression. Um, Susan, are you wait? I can't tell if you're, oh, I, you're doing something else. okay. No, I'm um, sorry, I, I'm on an iPad. And so I was just oh, looking in the chat that I saw yeah. popped up. I apologize, it's my finger. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> my camera. And Susan is, I don't know what time it is there, Susan. <laughs> no, it's Susan. a reasonable hour. It's about seven o'clock in Amsterdam. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for not joining 4 a.m. this time. <laughs> and I have to read Tom uh, Prohodich's comment. Don't get down. You all are doing an extremely timely, competent, and efficient job. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. Okay, I think uh, I think we're good. Uh, as always, if you ever have any kind of uh, issue, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, and I think you all know that I I now have a email address that's um, for the committee. Basically, um, I can now send out emails on that. So if you see something coming from NCAC, whatever, I don't even remember what my email is, but um, it, it maybe for me, it may not be the info from, so. Okay, so let's go straight into bylaws article review. We are likely to go over again. Um, I plan to go on, Susan and I are gonna present article five and uh, meetings and that's first up because we have kind of, we did it briefly last time, but we've done a, a number of changes and we are going into feedback session tomorrow. So that's the priority one. And then we'll go to um, article two, a quick review of the article that Bill and Tom um, did. We had a little bit of feedback there. And um, and then I I would like to go to articles eight and nine very, very quickly because there were just a couple of very, very quick uh, updates from the feedback session. And I think then they would be ready for Tom to put into the main document. And then we'll go back to um, article three. And then we do have an update from article four. So does that sound fair? Okay. Go for it. <laughs> All right, so I had just shared. Where did it go? And you, you okay, saw my so note that I have to slip out at 11, right? Yes. I did. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Can you guys see? So most That's of the it. wrong one. That's Article 4. Okay, are you seeing article five? There's yeah. five. Yes. Oh, good. Okay, still getting this sharing deal. Make it bigger. Okay, so basically there was an art uh, re revision two that was um, fairly minor from way back. And then basically a wholesale update of article fives since we've put anything up. So, um, the same purpose of the slide deck. So on the topics, um, made a few suggested changes for you, uh, introduction and then ge uh, having general meetings and then under general meetings, having their, the general membership meetings, special meetings and emergency meetings. And then I'm, we're suggesting putting executive board meetings and subcommittee meetings under here because there's stuff under quorums and motions and introduction that all that apply to all kinds of meetings. So we can talk about that as we as we go through, but just suggesting that. Quorums, which has gotten some interest, motions, conflict of interest, elections were moved to Article 4, parts of voting were moved to Articles 4 and 
three <laughs> and communications have been moved to article four and uh, I think mainly article four some parts of it are still here. So communications, when we get there, I don't know what to do with that article. I mean, it doesn't really fit in meetings. So Tom, um, if you have some idea where that should be stuck, I, I, I looked at all the articles. I really didn't see a place for it. But anything that we're not sure goes to Article X. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. So um, we've yeah. kind of added a introduction um, and actually listed the types of meetings that we have in the NCAC. There may be something called task force meetings. I, I don't know if we need to add to that or not, but it's a kind of a new section to just introduce meetings. So, um, and, and then we added the OPML because this is in different places throughout the bylaws. And we thought, let's just stick this for all the meetings in here. So how does that sound to you guys? Well, are those two uh, meetings under general membership, are those intended to be indented? Yes, because they're general. Um, so special meetings, like when we have our special meeting to approve the bylaws, um, in fact, we probably should actually say regular membership meetings. Thank you. <laughs> I was about to say that. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it's a general meeting. It's a general membership meeting. And no, no, um, now, now that you've added regular meetings, that makes, makes sense. more sense. Yeah, thank mm -hmm. you. Call it general. And uh, today's no, 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 never mind. Take no, that back. okay. And today's bylaws have kind of a combination of special meetings and emergency meetings, but the wording of them kind of sounds more like emergency meetings. So Susan and I took that and split them into two different types of meetings because you can have special meetings like the bylaws one, for example, that can be noticed normally. Um, it's not an emergency. And then there's could be an emergency situation. So you'll hear more about that when we get there. Um, but what do you think of having, well, why don't we discuss whether executive board meetings and subcommittee meetings should be in here as we go through the, after we go through the presentation and you can see whether they fit. Does that sound okay? Okay. And then we kind of moved this kind of how they should be held at, were in different parts of the meeting section. And we've kind of brought them all up into the introduction because they we feel like they should be the same regardless of what type of meeting they are. And the current bylaws um, had electronic meetings as an option, but in-person meetings were also um, in there as an option, and then they had hybrid as a possibility. So all meetings should be held either, we're saying either solely via electronic video meeting or hybrid electronic and in-person, um, and saying that there should never be just in-person meetings because a lot of the membership would not be able to attend. And I think that's the beauty of COVID. Uh, I mean, one of the very, very small pluses of COVID is that it's brought more members able to attend these meetings electronically. And that whether they're solely electronic or hybrid would be determined by the chairperson or the executive board or the committee chairperson as appropriate. You know, the funny thing about COVID is that it caused a great deal of national discussion amongst high, um, parliamentarians. Mm. Because um, most, if not nearly all of meetings were not authorized to be electronic. That's right. And, and mm. uh, and there had to be a major change in bylaws across the nation to have that occur. And those bylaw changes couldn't occur unless everybody was there in person. And now, but not everybody there in person could be there because of COVID. And so there was this tremendous angst going on about. Uh, yeah, uh, I bet. I yeah, bet. It, it was really an interesting uh, thing. Now, what, what's happened as well is that uh, the issue of voting uh, has uh, spurred the uh, development of electronic devices, not, not machines, but programs uh, where people could vote. And they're very good. Uh, and they're very complex, not complex, but very sophisticated and simple to use. And that may be something in uh, policies and procedures down the road that we might want to discuss. Yeah, that's a good idea. And Interesting. I, I want to actually try 
in our feedback session tomorrow of actually showing the individual polling as opposed to the overall results, or maybe do both um, to kind of test this out a little bit for voting. Voting will be candled a little bit later in this presentation. The last paragraph we wrote because hybrid, hybrid meetings shall provide real-time discussion among members attending electronically and in person. And that came up because in a discussion, I believe in the executive board meeting, there's some talk of having that the task force might do electronic, but really the emphasis would be on people in the person in the what in person meeting. And there was some question about how the people that were coming in electronically would be able to participate, and they weren't sure. So um, I think it would be who of us in the bylaws to have something saying, "Hey, everybody needs to figure out how that could be in the policies and procedures, but everybody needs to be able to have equal access." to be able to uh, be in the discussion, so. No, so I don't what, object to this. When I read but... that, I was like, um, okay, that's hybrid. What about the solely electronic meetings? Well, seems well like then there's solely electronic. That says electronic meetings shall provide real-time discussion among members attending electronically. I, I, mean, um, a... I guess I think that was kind of a given, but uh, maybe not. Uh, we have the chat window, which could be said to be a real-time discussion. Uh, the thing that this, I don't uh, sort of quote Michael, I don't object to this. <laughs> However, <laughs> uh, this does mean that if we try to have a hybrid meeting and communications fail, that meeting cannot occur. That's mm -hmm. true. True. Uh, but That's also, true. Uh, if communications fail, then uh, it's very possible that quorum becomes an issue right away, at which point the meeting is uh, 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 it's, uh, adjourned. Well, the other thing is if communications fail and let's say half the participants aren't able to attend, should decisions be made? No. Um, no, we can't. We, no, it's absolutely. The meeting cannot be held if electronic uh, facilities are not available. That's right. So would we want to say anything in here about ele fully electronic meetings are preferred or? Uh, I think I, they'll I, be I, preferred by the uh, executive board because we don't really have a way of doing the other right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hadn't thought too much about it until they talked about that for the for the community plan, possibly doing some. So. Susan, I did you tell Nancy. Yeah, sure. I did tell Nancy that I did go um, a couple weekends ago to the Pacific City yeah. CAC meeting, which was held at Kiwanda Center, and it was hybrid. There were a hundred people in attendance, approximately, in the community center, and people were also there electronically, and it was quite an interesting thing to observe. And uh, I told Nancy briefly. Everyone signed in even myself when I, on paper, when I arrived and then by microphone, everyone passed the microphone, stated their full name for the record and what community they were from or neighborhood. Um, so it was quite interesting. They had quite an attendance. You yeah, know, I thought that was fascinating. I, yeah, the, I wish uh, we had the facility. <laughs> well, what, the, what the, the topic? Um, the faculty senate at Oregon State has senators, almost 200 actually, and senators from all over the state of Oregon. Uh, most are on campus, and uh, since uh, hybrid meetings have occurred, there has been uh, two people who have been in the background. One, a tech person who's uh, obviously controlling uh, the um, uh, the Zoom, uh, and uh, and the other person is is uh, lining people up to speak, pretty much the way you did, Susan, last time. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, uh, people did things on chat, but um, uh, when time, everybody had an opportunity to speak. And if they were on camera uh, for, with their laptop on a Zoom, then they could be seen on the big screen where everybody was there. But it, but it had to be controlled by uh, a separate person who made sure that everybody was, was recognized and had an opportunity to speak. And that's important. And Tom, I think uh, your, your point is well taken is that we, we need to include something in there that says if, if electronics fail, then the meeting needs to be adjourned. 
And I think that would probably be in the policies and procedures, wouldn't it? Or do you it's think implied we stick in this it in language. The... It's implied yeah. in this language. I think we should spell it out in the PMP. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, okay. we need to make more Wyatt? progress here. <laughs> yeah. Do uh, do we need to add any provision? I was just thinking about the Pacific City facility that Susan was talking about as to whether, in fact, we should add any language, whether it's here or in the PNPs, about being able to hold hybrid meetings in facilities near but outside of the boundaries of the of the uh, uh, no. NCAC. Uh, time and place is determined by executive board, so I think yeah. we're covered there. But we should be making notes of the, <laughs> to go along because so we don't reinvent the yeah, wheel. Yeah, it's a good time. point. But because that is good, and and yeah, time and place will be something for the PNP. I think that would be I'll, good. Um, but good I'll, thought, I'll, Wyatt. Yeah, Someone minute, record. The minute, You'll make a note, yeah. Michael. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do we know what the facilities are that we need to have for a hybrid meeting? I have no idea. Susan, you said that Sarah brought this, uh, some of the electronic help, right? Yeah, she did. Sarah Absher was in attendance along with one of the commissioners, and she brought equipment. And I wondered to myself, if because I know there are some NESCON events that do occur up there, and it's, it's a nice facility. They've got plenty of chairs, unlike uh, the fire hall, where historically things have been held. Uh, it's not cold. <laughs> I know some events have occurred also at the Nesquan Valley School. I have never attended something there, so I can't comment on that as a venue. The equipment okay. necessary will be a camera uh, on the speaker uh, platform uh, and um, movable microphones for people who are in the audience or in the, in the assembly to speak as well so that people online can hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds great. I'm going to, I think we're getting into P and P kinds of things, but, yeah. um, but thank you guys. So is this okay to leave Tomorrow. for our recommendation to the feedback session? Okay. I see something. I would, in the uh, There's in a the comment fifth, that fifth gives line. more information in the chat. Let me see this here. Um, yeah. The Pacific city CAC uses Microsoft teams for their hybrid meetings, yeah. the preferred software by Tillamook County. That's good to know. Right. And, um, and that was Barbara Triplett. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, on to, do you want to cover this part, Susan? Uh, sure. Um, we ended up removing the meeting time and just being more high level as far as saying that the general meetings will be held on the second Saturday of February, April, June, August, October and December. And uh, let's see, remove the time in case it were to change. And I think we've already we've removed the electronic option because we already dealt with that in a different part of the bylaws. Right. Thank you. The intro. So really not significant change here, okay. except I just where we've been talking, have regular ones. So these are regular. Go ahead, Susan. Um, the next one, as we have talked previously, the June meeting shall be the annual meeting. And at that, the election of subcommittee members, approval of the budget for the following year. Um, we're recommending that the election of officers be held in April. Um, that it has to be properly noticed 14 days in advance and distributed via email and also posted on the NCAC website. So this will be consistent with article four and there doesn't seem to be any objection when we've discussed that with the executive board and or at the feedback session. And Tom, I guess we would leave it up to you on whether it's duplicative or whether it's said in one or the other sections. Uh, yeah, we're, we'll have to that we'll have to see the whole thing in order yeah. to be able to tell the duplication. And that that's just editorial. As long as we don't remove it altogether, we can right. delete it from one thing. I think we're going to have a lot of that. Yeah. And I think we removed the three prominent locations. It's not that we don't want to have things, you know, displayed in the boundary, but I think we were talking about having it 
um, under the umbrella of the communications secretary. And we can determine that in policies and procedures to identify because those locations may change over time. We have certain ideas for what and we think, regard as prominent yeah. or something people will notice. And I think we may still have it under some other section of communications I know or I'm something too. Um, so Susan and I have met many times on this article and, and uh, it's hard to remember where everything ended up. You wanna go with this, Susan? Sure. Um, we wanted to make sure in the bylaws that we let people know if they have something that they would like added to the agenda, the correct procedure for having it added and so we included the email address, the, the time that it has to be emailed by, and leave final consideration to the executive board, whether it's within the scope of the next agenda. So some of this has already been in the bylaws, but it wasn't clear. Um, and so it's been an issue where someone will just bring up new business in a meeting and, um, this gives people and and like a bylaws amendment, for example, and this gives people a way to get their agenda item put in as business. And it gives the executive board some authority to be able to decide whether it's appropriate and talk with that person. But how are they going to do that? How is the executive board going to consider a request that goes seven days prior to to the meeting? executive board meeting? That seems like you've got a logical loop the, there. The, so the request goes in seven days before the executive board meeting so that the executive board can discuss the request at their meeting to be then put on the agenda for oh, the next okay. general meeting. Gotcha. I was not reading that correctly. Okay. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Okay. And this is just a redundant paragraph. So I, I'm assuming, well, I guess I can't assume when we take it to the feedback session, we have to show what was there, but but once we do the feedback session, the language going into the document, Tom can get rid of a lot of this, right? Or, well, we can discuss that another time. All this redundancy. So section two, special meetings, um, basically a new section and it's based uh, that the NCAC chairperson can call uh, additional membership meetings due to special circumstances or to cover one or more topics in more detail. The meeting should be all electronic or hybrid as defined in section one and notice should be the same as for regular general membership meetings. Uh, we could make this the NCAA chairperson in conjunction with the executive board or just make it the executive board, but um, wasn't sure how to how to do that. So we're just saying the NCAC chairperson. Any thoughts? Let me just show you emergency meetings. So emergency meetings can be called to discuss an urgent and critical situation or issue as determined by the NCAC chairperson. And then the language below is the same. Somebody's typing. Can you mute yourself, whoever's doing that? Um, so the other language is already in there under special meetings before, other than time, link and place, which goes into P&P. So back here, uh, do you guys have any comments or thoughts on special meetings? Yep, that works for me. Okay, emergency meetings. Okay. You want to take executive board meeting, Susan? Sure. So executive board meeting is something that is new um, that they are. How many have they had so far? I think they've had We've two had or two. three. We've had two. And um, hopefully it's something that will continue because it seems quite productive. And so executive board shall meet once a month, minimum of two weeks, 14 days prior to membership meetings unless ordered by the executive board and no later than the first month of the fiscal year, the executive board shall schedule 
the day and week for the monthly executive board meetings. The notices shall be posted at least seven days in advance of the meeting date on the NCAC website and distributed to the NCAC membership email list. Okay, so this is directly taken from Article 6 that uh, Wyatt and I worked on on executive boards, and Wyatt agreed that uh, this could be moved into this section. So any any concerns, thoughts? Just, just a little nit. I think we've capitalized executive board in other sections. Mm -hmm. Good catch. Yeah. Yes, um, and thank you. And I know Tom will catch all of these <laughs> when he moves them into things, but I will I will try to do a better job of getting that corrected as we go through before the feedback session. Oh, and we've got more, <laughs> more executive boards. Go ahead, Susan. <laughs> uh, the meeting date may be changed by the chairperson with 14 days notice to the membership and special meetings of the executive board may be called by the chair. And in this case, um, the chairperson must call a special meeting on the request of three executive board members. Or should we say may or must? Uh, no, just... must. That's okay, yeah. really something saying if, if there are at least three executive board members who want a meeting called and the chair yeah. doesn't want yeah. to, that it requires the shell. chair to do it. Yeah. That oh, should shell. be shall. Shall. Must yes. is a natural consequence of, whereas shall is a, is a directive. Okay, perfect. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, any other comments before we move on? Okay. Go ahead, Susan. Uh, special executive board meetings must be held. Shall, perhaps, instead of must. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm editing as we're doing I need, I need to go through and, and search for all musts <laughs> and replace the shells. Thank you. Shall, uh, shall be held within 14 days of receipt of an emailed receipt. All Request. executive board members shall be notified of special meetings at least seven days prior to the meeting. And only business mentioned in the notice of a special meeting can be transacted at that meeting. Is can correct? <laughs> or shall it be may? <laughs> uh, the uh, bylaws shall not be musty. <laughs> shall not be what? <laughs> musty. <laughs> musty. Okay. So this was so, all, so this was I, all not, in Article 6. This been so what does this mean, the first sentence, that special executive boards from an email request by whom? By another board member or by anyone or? So in the previous paragraph, it, it's, it stipulates that it's from board executive board members. Only executive board members can request a special executive board meeting. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Which is typical with Robert's rules. The people who are part of that part of the organization yeah. <clears throat> are the ones who can request it. I wonder um, if we have to, oh, we should on. flesh that out though, if it might be a question if someone were to you know, dial in to the bylaws if they thought that they as a general meeting member, a, a general member could write something to the executive board. I, I see Bill's point. Yeah, there's a wording here on this, this particular, well, the first line there, to keep it uh, balanced with the previous one. Uh, it, this one's a little confusing, so I would write that. Uh, special meetings of the executive board shall be rather than special executive board meetings. What is it? What is a special executive board? That's, that's my point. Got it. Mm -hmm. Does that yeah. help clarify yes. people? Yeah. Put an of in of, there. Of the, of, the, <laughs> of the executive board. Yeah. That's okay. a good clarification. And I'm just going to quickly save this as a five, as a yeah. R4. Mm -hmm. This is not live on the website, by the way. Tom has trained me well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Does that sound all right to everybody? And so just one 
executive board member can require a no, special. Three. three. Takes three. And just this should okay. not be all right. This should not be in there, but it's just a reminder that all special meetings, regardless of what they are, are limited to specifically to the agenda as written, calling the meeting together. They cannot pick up something else. Right, and it says, well, does it say? Well, that's, that's yeah. In Roberts. That's in Roberts, and it's pretty clear. I think we have that. Do we have that about they need to be agended? Uh, yeah, I didn't see it anywhere, but um, uh, oh. but it is uh, required to be limited to that right agenda. Only. Oh. Yeah, I, I didn't see it this time through. I guess that's necessary for clarity, but we shouldn't really be repeating too much of Robert's rules in here. Right, right. Let's just uh, that in green. Because I could have sworn we had that elsewhere. So I, I think it did, and and um, and I think that wording right there. We can we can redo that wording later. Uh, yeah. There's there's a boilerplate wording in it. I think we have that. Okay. Thank you. And emergency meetings, basically, if there's something really urgent, they can call it within two days' notice. Sound okay? Yeah, I really like the emergency meeting edition. I just can't quite imagine what that might be. No. Uh, they I might have a like tsunami. The, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, or when they had the Coast Guard rescues when the floods came through the RV park in South Beach. You know, if something needed to be you know, information relayed immediately. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah. Well, then and what, that's, you really and this part's not, notice? Uh, yeah, the, you still need to be able to get things organized. Um, this is this is directly out of the current bylaws. So that part of it, we, we put in the red at the top just to, because we kind of split this article or this section into two. Um, but I don't know, is two days, has anyone been experienced enough uh, to know whether two days is gonna be adequate? We can- we'll... Or going even one day. I mean, I, um, Bill, are you suggesting less, less if mm -hmm. it's, you know, yeah. bad enough? I mean, your, your example- Do you wanna say 24 hours? I think this is okay. If there's something that is truly emergent, uh, this none of this business even applies. Now we're talking about you know if life, mm -hmm. life is in danger or something else. I, you know people are just going to come together and and, and get stuff done. But th this has to do with some policy decision or whatever. Uh, uh, I'm I'm just trying to figure out what 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 it what it might be. And it seems to me that mm -hmm. yeah you know, I I don't I just can't quite figure that. Out. Okay. So now we're into out of the general meeting section and into executive board meetings. Um, do you want to cover exact? Well, I'm going to cover that. Cause... Yeah, go for it. <laughs> it's my pet pet thing. So, um, so we've suggested Article Six executive board meetings and. Um, and Wyatt and I worked on the article for that, which will be presented at a future feedback session. The executive board has embraced it and they've tried two meetings already. Uh, they're calling it executive committee so far, but hopefully executive board will catch hold. Um, and it's been really, really helpful. Uh, gosh, just the last one where we could present all our bylaws stuff to them and get them to talk about everything together was just great. So there are public meetings also um, we're proposing that they meet once a month and a minimum of 14 days prior to the membership meetings, unless they otherwise order. So it gives them an out. If they don't want to have a meeting, they can they can decide they don't want one. Uh, no later than the first month of the fiscal year, the executive board shall schedule the day and week for the monthly executive board meetings. Meeting notices shall be posted at least seven days in advance of the meeting as opposed to 14 for a regular meeting. Uh, on the NCAC website and distributed to the NCAC membership email list. So 
we had discussed this as part of uh, executive boards earlier with Article 6, and everybody had been okay with this. We're just, Wyatt and I, Wyatt agreed that we could just move it in here. Any discussion? Well, let me keep going. Um, meeting dates may be changed by the chairperson with 14 days notice to the membership. And special meetings of the executive board may be called by the chairperson. The chairperson may call in a special meeting upon the written request of three. Did we already cover this? Seems like we covered this. Somebody has a vacuum running. Could you mute yourselves? Thank you. Something's running. Yeah. Oh well. Am I? I think I'm just going nuts. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> no, you're not. Seems <laughs> <laughs> like we were just talking about that. Okay. Um. Subcommittee meetings. Uh, do you want to take that, Susan? Okay. So. Um... Standing in ad hoc subcommittees and task forces shall meet as they deem necessary, either electronically or hybrid, as we described in section one. And meeting no notices shall be posted at least seven days in advance of the meeting date on the NCAC website and distributed to the NCAC membership email list. error here. Yeah, except we're going to have to define set task forces. Yeah, you know, it should be nice if we could just have them all subcommittees and it's something we're going to be talking about on Article 7, right, Tom? But we do need to, like the community plan isn't being called a subcommittee and I don't really understand why it's not. Well, it's kind of being called a we task can put force, in the PAP right? That they are. Uh, they're operating as a subcommittee because they're up. We're, we are operating under normal uh, normal rules. Mm -hmm. So you know, the task force to me is something that might be uh, something that. Excuse me, I have to get some coffee. Okay. Uh, uh, that. It might be something that uh, would be a mechanical kind of a thing, like if there was going to be some uh, emergency preparedness people getting together to, to to put up a building or to repair something. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not really a meeting. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really have mean minutes, and I don't think it should be covered under the open meetings. It's just somebody, people out doing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'd hate to have to have a 14 day notice to uh, repair a, a sign or something, you know what? Right. It and, and this silly. is actually seven days notice, but yeah. Or seven, but yeah. Okay. Still. Yeah. Yeah. So well, I, I kind of agree uh, with Tom there. Um, a task force is a group of people that have a specific task. When completed, they are disbanded. <laughs> Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a single operation kind of a thing. If, if it's a continuous thing, then it is a subcommittee again. And if it's a task force doing a singular activity or function or task as assigned, do they actually fall under public meetings law? Uh, you know, that's really the issue there. I don't, I don't believe so. Yeah. And they should, I think we should just eliminate task forces. Yeah. There's okay. nothing, they might want some. <laughs> no, well, yeah, you know, there's nothing prohibiting uh, the development of a task force ever. Uh, that's that's never really uh, implied. But but to put a task force in the position of having to have minutes and public meeting accommodations and blah blah blah, that's that's kind of counterproductive to me. That, that so, I agree, and there's nothing that prohibits us or the the board from creating a task force to go do something. Yes. But if we put it in here. The implication is that open meetings apply. Yes, right. Yeah, you're right. And but, and I think it's something that within Article 7 on subcommittees, we could state that maybe, Tom, we could talk about stating that a task yeah. force is outside of the scope of OPBL and see if that'll go through. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. One way that I can see in the NESCO and community that a task force <clears throat> would be used would be, say that um, a task force is assembled or whatever we call it, 
to inventory what is in the tsunami sheds to make sure there's adequate food. Mm-hmm. Because I know from time to time that has been a concern that checking the expiration dates of the canned foods, et cetera. And then that would re- be reported back. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that would be kind of ridiculous to have a, operating like a committee. So good, good example. Okay, so why don't we just not have that as part of Article 5 and Tom and all, we need to make a note, Tom, to try to figure out what to do with task forces. Okay, good. I'm happy with that. Okay. Okay, Section 4, meeting registration. Um, The registration word was already in the bylaws. There's nothing new here. Um, And... uh, that's where membership shall be confirmed at each meeting by either electronically registering for attendance at an electronic meeting or at or before um, for an electronic meeting. That should be for. I just learned about this little thing up here. It's really nice for an electronic meeting or sending the attendance sheet for on-site attendance at a hybrid meeting, getting rid of the all physical meeting. And regist- registration for all meetings shall include both the name, email, and the local UNESCO and address of the re- registering member to allow for confirmation of voter eligibility. So we've changed the wording to show that all meetings have an electric electronic option. We're kind of struggling here. We wanted to ask you, Susan, I wanted to ask you, We're adding email and local NESCO and address. Um, should we ask for member type, residence, property owner, business owner, et cetera? How often do we need to do this? So could we do it once a year at an April meeting and send out a registration survey uh, to members once a year? Um, do we need to have something like this every single meeting? That could be a little arduous. Um, and in our discussions with this and, and with other people in feedback sessions, we've ha- we've talked about wanting to grow the membership and could there uh, be some benefit in having a membership committee to show to grow membership? And that could be a subcommittee. Um, that could be something that could be put in under a standing committee um, under Article Seven, but. Jeff has kind of suggested that a little bit that um, not exactly even a, a membership committee, but a marketing kind of a function. So there could be two functions. One is to try to get the word out about Nesquin, about the NCAC, and the other would be to um, maintain a, a membership list. We did get uh, word back from uh, the county council that this is an exception to Oregon media, public meeting and document law. We don't have to publicize people's contact information. We have to publicize their names, but not their contact information. So um, that was kind of nice to hear. Nancy, the address, the term address in that last paragraph is somewhat limiting um, from the standpoint of people who don't have an address, i.e. it's just a piece of raw land, a tax lot number, so mm-hmm. I think it, we need to uh, to kind of expand that or make it more general. Could change right. location. Yeah. Property instead of address. I or think pro- location. Uh, address slash property. I think uh, location covers it. Is that okay? Property location? Sure. Would you do me a favor and right click on Nesquin and add it to your dictionary? Yes. Am I misspelling that? No, just it shows up as a, a misspelling. And Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. So we should make that property or business location. That's cool, Tom. Thank you for showing me that. <laughs> I didn't know how to do that. <laughs> a property... Or business location, did you say, Wyatt? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So business wouldn't be concluded under property? Not necessarily. At least that's not the way people normally understand it. If 
they don't own the location of the business, but lease it. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Does that sound okay to everybody? So the 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 answer to your question about do we do this once a year? Um, according to Jeff, we have no memory. We don't have a way of keeping that information alive. So it would have to be on a, if we do this, it'll have to be on a per meeting basis, the way things stand right now. I think okay. that's a pro meeting basis. Um, once a year, things change all the time once a year. And it's a, it's a big job for the secretary to have to keep that stuff down. Uh, at the um, when we register for uh, uh, online uh, uh, Zoom, we're asked um, uh, name and email, and I, it's no big deal to add another line saying local local uh, property or business location. Okay, what about member type? I don't think that's that that implies there's a something to be done with that, uh, and right. I'm not sure what what that is, and so I I wouldn't I wouldn't include that. Um, cause that was asked, um, at the last June meeting, but, um, they asked for both oh. local address and your mailing address, which gets to be a lot. If you're just signing up for a meeting and you're going in the day of the meeting or the morning, the minute of the meeting, and suddenly you've got all of these fields that you have to fill out. Yeah. We want to, we want to encourage them to come, not, <laughs> not right. the stuff. Yeah. So it seems like maybe once a year, I guess that could be under membership or something uh, under article three, having something or once a year, there's a sign up that's not a registration, but a, a sign up. And I think that's actually under article four under the communications coordinator can do that. So maybe we don't need to have it in other parts of the bylaws. Okay, so does this sound okay? Yep, sound Fine. Okay. Um, do we have a duplicate slide here? Here's we do. Okay, section five, quorums. This is something that uh, Susan and I spent quite a bit of time talking about and we've done quite a bit of research and gotten input from a number of people. Um, I think sometimes some of the people we've talked to outside of our group, the quorum can be a confusing word, um, but really all it is is it's setting the minimum number of members to discuss business and to vote. If we don't have a quorum, we can't do business. We have to just not even start the meeting until we can bring enough people into the meeting to have it work. My problem, um, my problem right away is uh, requiring 15 members for an emergency meeting. Um, that's, that's a general membership meeting. Well, but it includes, it says regular, scheduled, special, or emergency meeting. Oh, emergency. Okay. And Didn't uh, see that uh, part. Uh, that may be self-defeating. And okay. if it's an emergency, it could be dangerous. Well... You know, with Zoom, it could be that people are really interested if it's going to be an emergency because they're not going to call them very often. They but could, we could. But uh, yeah, um, I, 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 I don't know. I, I would be comfortable calling a special and emergency meeting. Is that? Can someone mute if they're making some? If there's somewhere noise around. Um. Hmm. Uh, Bill, do you have something going on in the background? I don't think so. So, oh. thank you. you. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, that's you ringing about... on the roof, Michael. Um, that should be uh, encouraging and entertaining. What is it? Rain on the roof. Oh, oh my is it really? Oh, wow. wow. What do you what do you have? A quanta? You live in a quanta? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna bring us back because we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> so if we've got 200 members, it seems like even for an emergency, 15 is going to be something that we could get to come. 
with even a two-day notice, don't you think? Uh, well, yeah, uh, you, except what happens if it's a true emergency and we can't get answered. people together? Uh, then what you answered we'll... that already. So, if it's a true so emergency, this, we'll do what um, needs to be done. <laughs> this committee, as a reminder, is to provide advice to Tillamook County. So if it is some true emergency, I don't see Tillamook County saying we've got to we can't do anything until we hear from the NCAC. Um, I mean, just to be practical. Um, so if we can't get people together, well, we won't give them our advice. But um, I mean, otherwise, what are you going to do? Say you, a quorum is the one person that shows up and then they speak. Have um, unilateral uh, <laughs> decision making. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, you can't do that. I mean, we could set a separate quorum for emergency meetings if, if, if you'd like to. I also should mention that uh, what we're recommending is somehow that got lost. I could have sworn we had this Typed out. changed. It used to be eight. Whoops. We're recommending switching to 15. um so and eight was when it was meeting in person only right, right from the old bylaws but the zoom really opens it up so far i've kind of looked back at meetings since zoom has happened and we've always had at least 22 at a meeting 15 is kind of robert's rules suggest this for organizations under a thousand um it's a fairly common number to have so if we exempt uh, emergency meetings from a quorum requirement, <clears throat> are we in a situation where we really need to define what can be done in an emergency meeting? I wouldn't suggest that we exempt them. I would suggest we have, if we change that, that we change it to a smaller number of people. Okay. We don't want to have task force in there, by the way. No. Thank you. Okay. Nancy, if there's confusion in the membership about what a quorum means in the first sentence, we might say a quorum sets the minimum minimum number of members in a uh, present at a meeting. Okay, we've already said. Well, actually, maybe have we? No, we haven't said yet. Okay, because we have. Later, under voting, we say you have to be present to vote. But yes, thank you. I think that's a good. Mm -hmm. Good. That's a good call. Okay. Well, uh, just Sounds present. Good. I don't think you have to put at the, at a meeting, but just present. That that's implied. Yeah. Sound good, everybody? Yeah. We have some great mm -hmm. editors in this group. Yeah. 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 That's a good ad. That's a good ad. Okay. I will suggest that I'll probably edit that to condense it, those two paragraphs, and do a self-definition of quorum rather than just having a bald face quorum. You, I'm you'll sorry, see it. I, it needs editing, and I can do that. Can you send it before the like today before the feedback session or are we going to leave it like this? Uh, I do, leaving session? it is fine. Uh, okay. It just integrating the definition with the minimum number, I think is probably sufficient, but this is clear. Fine. Go with this. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So show of hands or, or I can't see all of you, but I think I, actually I can see you all. Show of hands, how many want to have a smaller number of a smaller quorum for emergency meetings? Okay, how many want to leave it at, as the 15? Okay, let's just leave it at the 15. Thank you, though, Michael, for bringing it up. Um, we had four to one. Um, Okay, and then quorums taking out some of what already was there. So this is where the eight members was struck. 
and we kind of rewrote. So Robert's Rules of Order uh, suggests, oh, actually, I didn't actually get to this one. So we're recommending a majority of the members must be present to constitute a quorum for all executive board, as well as standing in ad hoc subcommittee meetings. So um, I think when we met a couple of weeks ago, we we're saying something about 50% plus one to the next total number or whatever, and doing all these calculations, what that meant. And really, Robert's rule says a majority of the members for these small groups. So that keeps it simple. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, anything else on quorums? Okay, um, motions. So members have the right to present, discuss, and vote on motions per Robert's Rules of Order newly revised these bylaws in Oregon law. Motions are restricted to business noticed in the agenda for the meeting. That's where it went. And then members can request agenda items as described in section two. So there might be some editing on which sections these go to uh, when Tom tackles this, but um, right now it's under motions. Do you want to talk about well, well, can you can, can you go back there just a second? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, there is a right for the membership to raise uh, new business at all meetings. Uh, and that last line seems to restrict that. Am I reading that wrong? Um, so we wouldn't be able to do biz to actually take action though on a motion that's made for new business without it being on the agenda though, correct? Because uh, per Robert's rules, the assembly needs to have notice that something's going to be discussed that could affect them. And one example of that is a few years ago when uh, Susan could probably speak to this, Susan with the short-term rental motion yeah, that there was, was made without notice. Yeah, there was um, something that, came up within a meeting that I happened to dial into, it was not on the agenda and the motion was made to issue a moratorium on short-term rentals and it was seconded and they actually took a vote and passed it, but it wasn't on the agenda. And so at the next meeting, they had to repeal that because it wasn't properly noticed. Well, yeah, all right. I, yeah, I have trouble with that. I. Um... People have a right to to raise new business issues, yeah. and and there must and if and everyone has the right to mm -hmm. refer to committee, or to postpone, or to somehow change uh, the fact that uh, people want to vote on it immediately. Uh, and well, uh, how about if we re reword it, Michael? And I'm I I hear what you're saying. And how about if we say that actions on motions for new business well something where they people can bring up a motion in a meeting but it's not going to be actually acted on if it's not on the agenda okay so new business items uh shall be deferred to a subsequent meeting that's elegant that's nice it is new business items or motions items, items. motions Either way. Should be motion motions right? related to new business items are restricted. Yeah, see, I still have problems with that. What if what if the issue is something that's pending and um, uh, needs to be dealt with uh, some somewhat quicker than the month? I mean, it, it's they, just they well, could I, call a special meeting yeah. or an emergency meeting. Yep. Wow. Good point. Wow. Yeah. Well, but it's not fair if you bring up something that's vital. You've not noticed something. It's just. And that's why by spelling out in the bylaws how you can get on the agenda for the next meeting, you know, we're warning people that they have a method to do it so that it's not, you know, where they can it can be put on the agenda by the process in that other section. But if they just come up and and want to bring something up that's a totally new topic they haven't brought up to anybody before, um, 
Yeah, that's uh, to me, that's fine. I, I mean, that's, uh, you know, the agenda belongs to the body, doesn't belong to the uh, any particular group. Uh, and, uh, and if they want to bring up something, it is, uh, it, it is uh, the opposition's right to say, I, I move to refer this and give reasons why it should be referred. Um, uh, you know, that this is out of place or it's out of order or it's or it's uh, uh, brought in without thinking, or there are repercussions that have to be discussed, but I move to refer this to committee. Um, uh, but, to, but to restrict the body from raising new business just out because it's new, uh, that, that, that's, a, that's unique for me. Uh, okay, so we didn't quite finish editing yeah. this, and I can produce a, uh, not, right, not necessarily live, but essentially the, the sense that I think is appropriate is that they are automatically deferred. We are going to make no decisions on something which wasn't on the agenda. Okay, um, I, would, so... uh, I would put uh, right at the very beginning of the sentence, action on new business items. Yeah, very good. good. And then is this deferred, right? Not referred? No, refer, referred should be. I, I, yeah, that I feel better with that. Um, maybe, maybe why, both. Bill, yeah. I feel better with that. I, I, I just don't like the idea of precluding new business. Referred for. Referred to appropriate uh, subcommittee. It could be the executive board too. Mm -hmm. Could be. I think the executive board would be appropriate. Yeah, I'm fine with that too. For dot dot dot, we'll, we'll wordsmith this. Um, so thank you for bringing that up, um, Michael. For items. So, so why are you highlighting that? That didn't. That I'm, kind of I'm looking at getting rid of some of it. New new unnoticed business items. Okay, we'll we'll work on yeah, this. I'm gonna put it in green. <laughs> I mean, I, I think at least every agenda I've ever seen always has the last topic is new business. New business, you're right. You're right. We're a little bit different creature than that, though. I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, and so I'm I'm, I'm used I'm, to organizations that if you're in a general meeting. And there's new business. It's agendized, you know. It it you're not going to bring up some some just right, you know can't just bring up a item of business where there hasn't been research and um, expect it to be resolved right there. That's, that's true. But no, there's, no, that's what that's what I'm saying. You can bring it up, yeah. right? You can discuss it. You right. just can't take action on it. Right. Um, and I and yeah. I like the change. I like the change. It's good. So thank you guys. Um, I'll, I'll give you a paragraph uh, later today. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Moving on. And come on there. Conflict if, of interest, if, Susan. If Bill is going to be, uh, you said Article 2 has some discussion. I'm not aware of it. If Bill is, we're going to need to make a little detour here because he's going to leave in 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, I, we're actually fairly close. Well, no, we're not. No, you're not. <laughs> uh, no, we're not. So we can go ahead and stop sharing this one and go to Article Two. Which I think I have up here. Well, let me just go to. Meeting schedule, too much up. Is Article 2 the name? Um, Article 2 is uh, or object. the object. Uh, I'm, aware, I'm unaware of any comments on that, so I'll be interested. Yeah, in that. there there were. Um, for goodness sakes. Sorry, people. I'm going to have to get out of share and find it on my desktop. I closed almost everything. Where did it go? Oh, I know where it went. Okay. Article 2. It's 
Sorry, people. I had been all organized and then I changed. Anyone see where article two is? Here it is. There it is. Um, okay. So it was very short. Um, it was just, and everybody agreed to this in the feedback session but I'm bringing it back because I can. So it was adding, oh, okay. taking this is confirmation actions. Of that. Okay. Right. Taking actions is needed to suggest community plan, county code amendments. That's it. And everybody loved it. So, but I'm bringing it back just to make sure That's the fine. committee has had a chance to look at it. Everything else was accepted. So, okay. okay. So can we... Have a motion to approve the revised Article Two object um, following the feedback session. So moved. Second. I guess second. we're going to be a second for a committee. Any discussion? All those in favor of the uh, motion to accept Article Two um, as amended after the feedback session, please say aye. Uh, aye. There was discussion. Sorry, um, Michael. Uh, what would did you want to say? No, no, I was just voting. Yes. Oh, you're voting. So okay. was I. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. 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 All opposed, please say no. Any abstaining? Okay, motion carries. Why? I don't think I heard you. Or you're muted, I guess. Yeah, I said aye. I'm way. sorry. Okay, just, that's great. All right. Yeah, and that was. Below the screen. And that was that. So what? What, Bill? Oh, he was waving madly. You just couldn't see oh, his head. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to stop that share. And can you, as long as we're here, let's just go back to articles eight and nine real fast. Is that okay? Because um, it's really fast. Eight and nine. Hearing no objections. That's that's the greatest line in parliamentary procedures right there. <laughs> it is. Hearing no objections. Move on. So, <laughs> so this is the main one for parliamentary authority. It's the only thing was there was quite a bit of discussion in the meeting. And then Tom Prohodich actually sent wording as he had promised to do um, to go ahead and change this, which was consistent with what everybody seemed to like in the feedback session. So basically adding in Tillamook County ordinances or board orders, other applicable law regulations or the NCAC bylaws. So the whole thing reads um, that Robert's rules of order newly revised shall be the governing rules of the operation of the NCAC, its subcommittees and task forces. These rules shall apply in all cases unless they are inconsistent with Oregon public meeting law, Tillamook County ordinances or board orders, other applicable law regulations or NCAC bylaws. So my I'm not out task forces. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you um, can task forces, but they can't. They can't be out there doing crazy willy nilly stuff on their own. Yeah, but you don't want them to have to worry about Robert's rules of order. No. Okay. Uh, uh, shall I, we? I wouldn't like. Okay. I, I that's fine with me too. By the way, to, to take off task forces. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, yeah. so can we have a motion? I don't, this one's not live, I'll correct it, but can we have a motion to approve Article 8 Parliamentary Authority with the amendments here plus removing task forces? So moved. Moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Any, Second. any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries. So I'll get an updated version of this out after the meeting. And go to nine. This was had a little more discussion. Uh, 
that's not new. It's just. <coughs> hmm. Is that the right one? I don't that person no said, lead on that, that one. A chair person rather than chair. That's the wrong one. Let me. Yeah, yeah. That's that's an old one. Yeah. Let me go back to. Part three. Can you still see what's on the screen? Yes. Okay. All right. So here it is. I don't know how I got the wrong one up there. So page one, uh, they wanted to have um, the bylaw subcommittee shall consider all suggestions and issue a recommendation. There was quite a bit of discussion on being able to get back to somebody who has made a recommendation. And so we agreed to add that. So any discussion on adding this? Okay, can we have a motion to approve the I move that article we, nine? Uh, accept the changes as proposed. Second. Okay, any discussion? All those in favor of Approving Article 9 as amended after the feedback session, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries. Great. We have just gotten through a bunch of stuff there. So now I'm going to go back to Article 5. And I think this is what I'm going to turn into a pumpkin. Um, <laughs> so, okay. Uh, have I'm have a safe trip, Bill. Thank you. I'm a little worried, but... Uh, where are you yeah. going? Where, where are you going to go, Bill? I'm going to go up into the mountains where it's snowed four feet in the last three days. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're if they're warning everybody 18, down here to. If you're going out 18, it's not looking good. No. Yeah. All right, that's not it's, looking good anywhere. All it's right. Still, it's still snowing heavily here in Corvallis. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. And we're up to yeah. five. Right. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Bye. Take care. All right, so conflict of interest, Susan, you need to get to speak on this at some point here. Yeah. <laughs> but that okay, was so, a good diversion, so. <laughs> yeah. In a nutshell, we've uh, kept everything, but just added um, that subcommittee members uh, give their conflict of interest or lack of conflict of interest. Otherwise, this is the one that was revised and approved by the county council. I think it was two years ago. That's fine. Yeah. That all looks quite good. So, yeah, the only thing we were doing was to, you know, we've all been talking about conflict of interest and we're just yeah. making that legitimate. Yeah. Okay. Well, elections has been moved to Article 4. Um, do we need to keep this in there? I guess technically, do we need to show these moves as we're presenting to the feedback session? I don't think they're going to care. Well, what do you think, Tom? In the, uh, you'll see in, uh, assuming we get to it, in the uh, revision on Article 3 that I did, I did a side-by-side. -side and okay. where there was, moot, I just showed the original text and just to note that it's elsewhere. Okay. Uh, I'll look at that more carefully. Thank you. Uh, voting, uh, three slides. So um, we're saying that, uh, NCAC action shall be a majority vote of the members present, including officers. That's all current text. And then we're adding an exception bylaws amendments, which require two thirds vote. Um, those attending via video conferencing shall register their vote via electronic polling or a roll call vote uh, in case they can't do electronic polling. Members attending a hybrid meeting in person may vote by a show of hands or a paper ballot. Uh, a member must be present to vote. Proxy voting is prohibited. So, so 
I'm a little bit concerned about the two thirds vote on the M bylaws, uh, only because we're trying some, we may have some things in there that we may might not want to live with. And I'm not sure I'm ready to think about a two thirds vote to get something undone. Yeah, but by, you know, that was article nine that we just voted on. And um, that was part of article nine and partly because bylaws should be hard to change. I agree. Well, and I, I do hear you though. I, <laughs> I get Robert's, Robert's rules is pretty clear um, that that requires a two thirds majority in some places, even four fifths. Um, but uh, yeah, you can't just do it by a simple majority because, you know, go back to um, quorum. Uh, you've got a quorum of 15 people and seven people feel like, that. you know, it, it's just, it should be tough. It should be tough and it should be general in order to change it, even if it's removing something. The other option is to create a super majority. Yeah, that's, and that's, yeah, four fifths or whatever. Yeah. Or 60%. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll live with what we live with then. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, there's been some discussion over proxy voting <clears throat> and voting with authorized people. Uh, did you guys want to talk about this? Um, Robert's rules is pretty darn clear that proxy voting should not be allowed for a number of reasons. One is that you can have discussion that could change people's minds. And if a proxy has been given or somebody has been sent that's authorized, uh, they may not feel comfortable in changing even though they'd like to. And in an election situation, nominations are allowed from the floor. Um, you don't want to be voting for someone when you don't even know that you might vote for someone who's allowed to be on the floor or when candidates make their statements, you may change your mind based on what they're saying in the meeting. Okay. Um, my, my, my lack of clarity is if we do adopt the limiting the number of people who can vote. Uh, essentially, those people who can vote are proxies for those people who can't. Yeah, and, and there, I think there's a difference between a representative that's always representing, say, an LLC or a trust or whatever, versus somebody who's designated to go to that one meeting and and uh, it's got to be it, it's got to be on a per meeting basis because you don't want otherwise we wind up having registration and history and checking mm -hmm. it's it's got to be live and yeah i've never I, seen proxy votes uh, prohibited um and uh, and really oh yeah and uh, again uh, currently um uh, in the two uh, organizations for which I'm uh, a parliamentarian, uh, they do have proxies and those proxies do vote. Uh, but I, I'm not opposed to it, by the way. Uh, that's I'm, I'm just raising that point. Um, uh, if they're proxy, they have 100% uh, representation of the person who gave them the proxy and the proxy is in writing. Uh, and if that person cannot be present, then uh, that's that's their concern. Uh, and if things change, uh, then you have to understand that things are going to change. That's the nature of discourse and, and argument and debate. Uh, and it's very possible that, uh, very possible that whatever's on the floor is going to be changed in some respect. Uh, so uh, it's a proxy vote there just only, uh, only to support what's already uh, expected to be done. Then it's not really a meaningful proxy. Do we want to get into the business of checking proxies and validating them? Good point. So I'm going to read out of Robert's rules um, on proxy voting 45-70. A proxy is a power of attorney given by one person to another to vote in his stead. The term also designates the person who holds the power of attorney. Proxy voting is not permitted in ordinary deliberative assemblies unless the laws of the state in which the society is incorporated require it or the charter or bylaws of the organization provide it for it. So we could do it. Ordinarily, 
It would neither be allowed nor required because proxy voting is incompatible with the essential characteristics of a deliberative assembly in which membership is individual, personal, and non-transferable. In a stock corporation, on the other hand, where ownership is transferable, the voice and vote of the member is also transferable by the use of a proxy. But in a non-stock corporation where membership is usually on the same basis as in an unincorporated voluntary association, voting by proxy should not be permitted unless the state's corporation law is, um, absolutely requires it. If the law under which an organization is incorporated allows uh, for proxy voting to be prohibited by a provision of the bylaws, the adoption of this book as parliamentary authority by prescription in the bylaws should be treated as sufficient provision to accomplish that result. So it's basically saying if we don't say anything, the assumption is that it's uh, prohibited. But they're pretty strong here um, that it shouldn't be, and for those reasons, and in other parts of Robert's rules, it talks about why, uh, where people need to be able to make changes based on debate that's happening in the meeting and discussion in the meeting. So I'd like to see us leave the language. What is what does that mean? Why oh, leave what language? The the pro prohibition of voting by proxy even though Robert's Rules incorporates it, and so therefore it may, may not be necessary to state as a matter of clarity to people, it's helpful to have it in the bylaws. Okay. Not yeah. everybody has a volume of Robert's Rules of Orders sitting on their desk. Well, you yeah. simply didn't until five months ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. I, I just, you know, my, my purpose in raising it is just to, assure that it is not a default that proxy vote is not is prohibited but but it is the right of the of, of the organization to prohibit it i i'm just i want i want you to understand that that to prohibit it um to me sort of renders proxy votings worthless except that that person has a right to speak but then everybody has a right to speak i you know it's just it's it's an interesting little conundrum right there. That's all. It is. And of course, sometimes you think of proxy voting as being, you know, there, when we met a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking proxy voting and authorized, uh, being able to have an authorized representative in your place uh, were two different things. And maybe they are. Um, proxy voting often is, you know, somebody could be gathering proxies from members that they would present saying, I have 10 votes, right? And, or I have okay. 40 votes that I'm representing and that's definitely okay. prohibited. And that's where in the bylaws, one, one vote per member. And if we say members have to be present to vote, um, that might take care of it. Uh, I think Tom raises a good point, you know, with when we're talking about people who are representing a, a trust or a LLC or whatever, um, how how do how do you manage that right because it well, may not be the same person every time yeah you could you could limit proxy votes to one vote no, uh, i do understand the concern about one person showing up with 15 votes in their hand mm -hmm. that's that's you know that i i i can't support. yeah that's valid yeah yeah but we already I have can see that. where that's an issue <laughs> we, we have that in that one person people vote only persons vote and each person gets one vote. So yeah. we're already covered there. Yeah, yeah, right. It's where and somebody could stand well, in for also, someone else is the question. That and, and that they need to be present in person, right? They, yeah. Okay, so. well, then I'll, um, with, with this discussion, and I think it's a worthy discussion just to raise the issues, I'll, I'll go along with this wording. It must be present to vote. Okay, do we want to take out the last sentence? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's redundant if you if that's what you mean. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna read a comment from Tom Prahadic. That's why you have to get it as close to right in the first instance. That yeah. is on two thirds vote to amend the bylaws. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so that was an earlier discussion. Yes, Nancy is right as to the difference between proxy and representative. As to proxies, I oppose it. I think not allowed as a general rule. Facul faculty voting is different. Yes, as to Nancy's reading of ROR. Um, so I'm a little confused 
Tom Prohodich, if you wouldn't mind just saying, are you saying that we should leave proxy voting in or take it out? The restriction. I I would leave it in. I understand that it may be. Um, I guess I should. You you've allowed me to speak. Yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I would leave it in only because it's an issue that's come up. And it's a, I mean, it's true that a member must be present to vote. It indicates very strongly that proxy voting is prohibited, but um, I could go either way, but I think I would keep it in because it, ha it, it comes up all the time. I've had people ask me if I can vote for them. I mean, mm. it, there's been no clear, there's been no clear rule here. And they've, but I've had my own clear rule. I've been asking to cast a proxy vote for them, and I'm saying I don't think I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you. Fair enough. Fair enough. I withdraw my objection. Okay. So, does anyone object to leaving the wording as it is? Okay. And thank you, uh, Tom and Tom, and everybody for that. Um, it's gone to number two. Uh, do you want to? Read this one, Susan. Sure. So our proposed um, for voting, all votes shall be recorded publicly. Each member's name shall be linked to their votes. The secretary shall make a permanent record of the outcome of any vote. And the redacted part is from previous paragraphs. So uh, we kind of moved that around. So this was just recent uh, input from county council. I would have actually preferred to not have votes public, but um, that's not as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, voting 3-3, three, three. minority viewpoints can be made a part of the record by the secretary. Members may also submit their minority positions in writing within 48 hours of the meeting in which a vote has been, is, has been taken by emailing info at blah, blah, blah. One or more representatives of the minority positions may be designated in the meeting to write the minority report. The minority position shall be included in the record and in any NCAC report. So this is in there in the current bylaws in black and in the crossed out sections. Um, before they were saying that it needed to be done at the meeting, uh, any minority report needed to be made at the meeting. So I talked to Sarah about this uh, and she said that what typically happens in the rare time when there's a contentious vote about something affecting land use or the county or one of our objectives is that there is often a designation of somebody in the meeting to represent the others with an email, but that really anybody can write to the county with their minority opinions. And as been stated before, the uh, supervisors consider all the opinions, not just the, the vote and the numbers, um, but this gives people an idea of how they can they can do it. So what do you guys think? I, well, I, this also puts it into our records, which is important, mm -hmm. but I'd have a minor quibble. I'd say write a remark, minority report, because there may be more than one. You may have- Good uh, point. Yeah. Good point. Uh, where where sentence. is this? Oh, second it's the, the um, second to the last sentence okay. in now, the meeting to write oh, a minority a. report. Got it. Both okay. times. Same sentence, both times. Where's the other one? Right above. Uh, minority positions. Uh, just delete the word the. Just say a. Oh, I a. see. Okay. That's that way we're covered. For... Thank you both. Does Multiple. that sound good? Yes. Okay. Any other comments on this? Um, yes. Yeah, uh, I do. On the, on the last sentence, drop the first word, the, and pluralize positions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got the S. Drop During. this. Did you say drop this? Yeah. The? Yes. Yeah. Because there Got may it. be more than yeah, one. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Capitalize. That makes sense. Yeah. Good at it. Okay. Um, Tom Brahadich is saying, 
I like the minority report language, but how about three business days, remembering that we're volunteers and have other things to do and taking weekends out of it? We could change it to business days. Um, so I I don't think we care that much. Do you want to say anyone care about changing 48 hours to three business days? No, I or think that's a good idea, but I would I would also add the term after the meeting at which a vote has been taken. Okay. Three business days after. I like that. Boy, it is piling down here. I cannot. Is it really? Yes, it is. Uh, no, okay. it stopped snowing here. We've got about four inches now. What do you think? Does this sound good? I like it. Don't have to bold this, I guess. And I, I realize I've got things in the wrong area but okay all right thank that you works. everybody any other comments on this one okay just uh, get in the area without a blank okay so here's the section that we susan and i weren't sure what to do <laughs> with so we took some things out um that had been moved to other areas completely some but uh this is stuff that we weren't really sure what to do with that didn't really fit under communications coordinator. It didn't fit elsewhere. So do we want to just keep it, talk about it tomorrow, and then Tom can figure out where to stick it. <laughs> so the first one is email shall be the preferred method of communications. All known meetings or hearings affecting the NCAC area of responsibility shall be announced at regular or special meetings by email and on the NCAC website as appropriate is kind of, we added the red part. Um, we were also talking here about possibly expanding in the policies and procedures, whether we post, you know, uh, publicly in different areas, if we post an annual kind of a thing, if we post monthly meetings like they're doing now, if we post on the NCA website, if they'll let us do that, if we'll post on, the fate, there's a Nesco and Facebook, friends of Nesco and Facebook page, you know, different things like that, um, or recommend a, a marketing committee that, that goes out and tries to find members. Because I think what we're hearing a lot of is that there's a lot of confusion between the NCA and the NCAC. And people don't know the NCAC exists or what we do. So um, it's, 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 you know, I, I know Jeff's got quite an extensive email list that goes out, but, you know, is, is that something that we should think about recommending? So, uh, or is it even appropriate for us to do that? I think the subcommittees article allows for new subcommittees to be formed. It's something the executive board might think about doing whatever, but we could also think about suggesting adding something like that. So kind of all over the map, but Dick, Susan, do you have anything to add? Nope. I think that we were just talking mainly about growing the membership because Nesquin is a big community and we can do more outreach than we are doing. Trying to figure out, like you say, how to factor that in to, you know, the purpose and the organization and if bylaws is, or policy and procedures, the appropriate area to mention it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So any comments so on this page? I do. Sure. Um, they, uh, when it's okay, said, Tom. Tom's talking right now, and then uh, we'll go to you, Michael. Okay. So the first two paragraphs belong there. I'm not sure about the third paragraph, but we should have the methods for communication about meetings and about things going on. That's appropriate for that section. The last one. Okay. Um, it's kind of up in the air. I would suggest <laughs> we probably add uh, the website to the first paragraph because that's also a preferred method of communication. And that's, that's a good point. So there should be. Methods. In the Uh, and then Michael? make communication singular. 
Well, no, hold on. Communications in that sense is not just the process, but it's it's the different things of communication. That's there are different different meanings of the word communication. It's a it's this is a noun rather than a than a, a verb. Uh, no, oh no, it's in the first paragraph should be singular. Yeah, it should be singular. In the first paragraph, not the heading. I agree. But the I singular. agree. Right here. Yeah. Is that okay, Michael? Well, I don't care. I it's just uh, you know, communications are different words. Uh communications are sometimes like messages rather than process. So uh this, this is important. that's fine. Go ahead and drop it. All right. Okay. Yeah, methods is qualifying communication and methods okay. is plural. And and we can edit as so Michael, you had a comment and then yeah, we kind of need last, to yeah. Um, I, I'm, I'm looking at the last one and it says uh, periodic community surveys may be taken. Is that giving permission? Yeah. Uh, did, uh, is that is permission something that needs to be given? I don't know. It was in the bylaws already. Yeah, I know. Um, it, it was kind so. of strange. I mean, I'm looking at that. And also <laughs> uh, land use, but nothing else. Um, well, we, we added and other matters and other within matters. the scope of Article 2 object. But it, because but it, it did just say land use before. Yeah, yeah. I, it's it just I don't. Okay. That's why Susan and I are recommending changing that to if other matters. The whole thing. What? What's? What's the bot? What? Uh, what effect does that have? Uh, they still uh, the the survey can still be taken. That's true. Good point. Sure. I mean, anyone that, uh, disagree that we could take that out? It's kind of, um, you know, because, you know, essentially, if you want to get nit, 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 nitsy pixie about it, the question in my mind is, oh, well, don't we already have that right? Yeah, it's possibly something that could be put under policies, policies and procedures. And procedures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. And, well, you know, and if we don't have that right and it is given, what other areas need to be clarified as giving us the right to act? That That's kind of how my twisted brain works from time to time. So I would like to answer that in that we sh does seem like a policy and procedure, but we should specify how those are formed. In other words, somebody just can't say in the name of the NCAC, send out a survey, which is inflammatory. Uh, we have to have some control mechanism. That's a PNP thing. So we, I think Michael's point is good. We don't really need this. Uh, but we should, it is something we need to address in the PNP. Yeah, I, yeah. That's, good, uh, that's a good point right there. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's like the guy on television who puts on a white smock and has a stethoscope around his uh, neck uh, telling you something about drugs. Okay. Uh, <laughs> good comments. Um, so we'll go ahead and make these changes, set it up as a feedback session kind of a thing and send that out to you guys. Um, it's now 1128. I mentioned at the beginning that there's a good chance this meeting's gonna go on. Is there any objection if we, we still need to talk about article three. Um, I don't think we're gonna get to article four update, but uh, you guys can look at the updated presentation that's in the, in the meeting file please do. Um, and then, um, but I'd like, I would like to go through article three. Okay. And, um, and then review and update the project plan. We kind of already did uh, most of that. Uh, and then public comments. So uh, is there any objection if we go ahead and continue until noon? Okay, thank you very much. This is, so I'm going to get out of this and I'm gonna let you share, Tom. Okay, you should be able to. Okay, so uh, first of all, apologies to Wyatt. He and I inter interacted quite a bit, but we weren't able to go through the meeting uh, minutes or the meeting, uh, this presentation. Uh, together. So he's going to be seeing some of this uh, live. I, I apologize, Ryan. No uh, problem, Tom. Yeah, other, bit, other bits of real life got in the way. 
Okay, so I wanted to put a label on this so that in case somebody else picked it up, like sort of like maybe some other Tom pick it up, you know that this is so old, <laughs> so alternative uh, that we needed to discuss this as to whether or not this is the kind of format we need to go forward with. So I did change quite a bit. Um, I did change the purpose of the uh, of the to finalize the substantive changes, uh, side by side review of all topics. And uh, and discuss the remaining point of contention, which is restricting membership. Now that's a posit on my part. I'm positing that we have a decision. And we, what this particular presentation is lacking is the numbers that go with the the uh, posit that we've made a decision on that, or at least a tentative, a tentative decision for recommendation. So next. Uh, so I've listed all the areas which were a bit missed. Some of the things which were going to be moved and were, and some of the things which didn't change, didn't get reviewed. Um, basically, I redid the presentation hours before it actually happened and uh, didn't all get changed with the way that it needed to be. So this is more orderly, and I believe I have covered everything. So there's a little bit of stuff that wasn't covered before. Okay, so gone on into the meat of it. So the format is uh, not redlined. It is comparison of the NCAC area text. This is the new text. This is the original text. Uh, this is, I believe we had a pretty close to two thirds majority uh, indicating that the watershed was the uh, most appropriate boundary. Uh, that changes from that. Uh, I do have a map at the end to show that uh, if somebody asks what that is, uh, but uh, that's basically what was decided. Any comments on that? So my only question is, in terms of somebody who wants to understand what the watershed is, is there a way we could have some kind of a, a link or something in there to a map or have the map embedded within the bylaws because it's not supposed to change right it's a physical boundary so I'm that people hard. do understand or i'm not I, hard over on having a map in the in the bylaws I, it's just i've never worked with a set of bylaws that had it but i right. don't see any reason why it couldn't uh, because it is unclear and you can find this map uh, and it can be generated uh, actually, with Susan's help, I was able to find it. Uh, and uh, so having it in the map in the a, a better copy of it uh, rather than this marked up copy, I think is a reasonable thing to do. I agree. I think with all the interest that there has been shown for it, I think it would be yeah. helpful. Okay. So next topic is the big one. Uh, so first thing I did was uh, I had been working on the definitions for a bit and uh, the other Tom and I <laughs> have uh, gotten back and forth and he's said that that's not as horrible as it was before. Uh, I think that's a reasonable statement. Um, <laughs> last, and let's last... just mention that, that Tom Brahadich has come up with quite an extensive set of suggestions for membership. So yeah. Um... So, and, and I don't have all of his arguments that we got uh, yesterday uh, incorporated in this presentation. Uh, but one of his points when I asked specifically about these definitions is they probably need more work, but probably the beneficiary trust also needs to apply to the business owner. So that would be replicated down here. And I'll do that uh, for the major presentation. And that sort of gets us down to three uh, things which corresponds to the th three bulletized items. So each one of those things is now has a definition, what it, what it means to be a resident, what it means to be a property owner, what needs to be a business owner. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to have a sort of plain English definition embedded in the text, referencing uh, in the back of the document what exactly that means. For instance, a resident is basically somebody who lives in Nesquan. Uh, 
it's that is insufficient for a proper definition, but for somebody who's reading it casually, they'll be able to understand what that means. Uh, property owner, once again, somebody who owns property or may not live there. A business owner, somebody who has a business within the bounds of the Nesquin uh, area. So in principle, does anybody disagree with splitting it into a plain English with a reference to the back uh, of a concise definition? Um, does it say somewhere still in a different slide, Tom, that regardless of the number of categories you might fall into or qualify for that you only get one vote? Uh, yes, that's that's further down. This is just, right. this is preliminary. Just the definitions, yeah. Yeah, that's you. the definitional part. And for the for the presentation, I'll, I'll as I say, I'll replicate this format for that and uh, perhaps have some advice and things that might need to change. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I had an opportunity to be one once and said, no. <laughs> uh, okay. the, um, pardon me. I, is, the, is the post office considered a business? Yeah, we Actually, be. it is. Yeah. And so. The Post Reorganization Act back in 1970. Oh, my. Oh. Made it into a business. Wow. Why? Yes. Bless. Well, and the same question. In other words, uh, well, does uh, 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 are there such things as government businesses, and is that a conflict of interest? Yeah, like Amtrak, the post office have all been turned into government enterprises. And do they have a vote? Well, for one thing, we don't have one anymore. That that's helpful. <laughs> Okay. I, what what other point I would make, and I, I I don't I'm not married to this, but do we really want to make it in whole or in part, or do we want to make it primarily uh, that a business operates primarily from a property site located within the boundaries? Um, I don't care. If somebody has a franchise, uh, they could have other interests, other places. Uh, for instance, if the uh, yeah, you know, heaven forbid, maybe the uh, the trading uh, store uh, trading post got uh, turned into a Seven Eleven, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I said that. There's a bad picture in my mind. Ah! <laughs> okay, now uh, moving on. Um, One question about that. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you go back to that slide? It's the first thing about resident. And I'm wondering about the RV park. They are residents, Susan. Um, but I, but I know that them. they're not supposed to live there more than a certain number of months, but the county's not enforcing it. And I don't know what that requirement it is. Is it less than six months? Yes, it is. No, no it's typically no less. more than 30 days. Is it thirty days? Um, I thought Sarah had said six months, but I I don't rem I don't know but, that for a fact. But that the reality is that our our mailman lives in the RV park. Um, I would if I lived in the RV park, I would think of myself as resident. Yeah, we have no way of preventing that person to present to present themselves as a member. I mean, they they vote from that location. That's what qualifies them in, in general elections. If we were to be strict about uh, voting, which, uh, then we would have to eliminate them under this rule, under these words. But as a practical matter, we have no way of doing that. Yeah, I just wanted to raise the question because I know we talked about it many months back. Mm -hmm. I think that what we're, we're trying to avoid here is having somebody who comes for a month or they're, you know, I don't think they're going to want to come to our meetings, but you know, <laughs> it doesn't own property, but it's there for the summer and all oh, this would be fun. But I don't know that it's that critical. Anyway, well, when at least six months of the year is um, kind of answers that. Right. 
that's why it was put in, I think. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what the rule is, the Oregon ORS 247. Yeah. Okay, why don't we move on? Because there's a lot more here. Okay. So uh, the basic, <laughs> I move things out of the way so I can see them on my own slide. Okay, so the basic question is, should we add language to the bylaw bylaws uh, to restrict the number of people who can be a member, that is to vote? And the two, two uh, really controlling uh, things are, this process must be fair. If one category of membership is limited, then all of them should be similarly limited. I believe we agree with that. And also it is not clear that Tillamook County will approve. We don't know. So it's possible moot. Just to give people fair warning, we, if we decide something, the county can say no. And that's, that's what this is then. So is everybody okay with that slide? So Subject I think that problem. there are a number of people that actually believe that all residents should have a vote regardless of how many are in a given property. Um, that's been very strongly stated. So if yeah, we as a committee that's, that's feel like in, this is the way to go, then that's yeah. really the question, right? It's not- um, this, is it's our not recommend, this is our recommendation that the process right. would, be, would be fair if we categorize, we limit one category, we limit all the categories. Right, I just wanted and to that, clarify the question because- uh, As applied, I don't agree with that. If in fact the idea here is that we limit uh, residents um, in some form or fashion based upon some criteria, I don't know how you would do it, um, it just would seem to be unfair. If we're talking about membership of people who don't reside here based upon some kind of property ownership or property interest, limiting that to, let's say, for instance, in Michael's situation, two votes for that property, as opposed to limiting residents to a, a number of votes. How, how would that apply, Tom? How could you do that? Uh, I'm postulating that if we do you know, personally, I would not have any restrictions at all. But if we do do a restriction and we do show favoritism to one category, we're going to be called out on it. Uh, so this is a compromise. Uh, yeah, I don't know if we're going to get called out on it, but maybe we oh, ought to I take guarantee. a look at the language. <laughs> um, so maybe we need a vote on this. I, I think personally, I believe that if we're gonna if we're gonna limit, we've got to do it across the board. I agree with you, Tom. Okay. Okay, uh, so why don't you go ahead and, I think this is a really key thing. Why don't you go ahead and make a, a motion to this, Tom, and let's actually get a vote on okay. it. Okay. Can we see the language, please? Uh, it should be on the screen right now. Opinions. It's, uh, it's the second paragraph on the screen. Um, second Brian. bullet. That one. And so would... let's clarify when you make the motion that you're talking about, should option two for membership be selected, that this would be a key point, right? If it's option one, then it's moot. Yes. So I move that if category one, or if we limit the, the number of people who can be members uh, by category, uh, that that same criteria be applied to all categories. I move. Okay, is there any discussion? Uh, we, I, I've said what I have okay. to say. Okay. So we're, we're waiting actually for a second on that. Well, that, you know, that, I. We actually are a, a committee of a small group, so we technically don't oh, need a okay. second. Fair so, enough. Fair enough. Um, I know I've asked in the past, but I'm going to back off of that. So all those in favor of the motion to limit uh, if, if option two is selected and one category of membership is limited, then all categories of membership should be similarly limited. Please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. aye. So three, uh, all those opposed, please say no. No. Okay, so three to one. Oh, we, we're missing Bill. Okay. Um, I'm remaining neutral. 
So, um, okay, I think we can go ahead and take this as a, a recommendation, but I think when it's presented, Tom and Wyatt, at the feedback session, you need to say that the committee is really wanting feedback in this area, right? Yeah. Um, so I can add something of a... Uh... And you got the motion, right, Michael? And okay, I'll just yeah. add a comment that the committee is not unanimously in favor of this. Okay. And I'll give, I won't let you uh, see me misspell things. Yeah. Okay, this is a variation on uh, what I showed before. Uh, I've gathered a few more opinions uh, from one place and another. Uh, is this a useful slide for soliciting? But here's my thought. This encapsulates a lot of the objections I've heard. And if people agree with those objections, then they don't need to have further input. But if we're missing an opinion, I think we need to gather it. So that, that was my thought. Well, personally, I really like it because it, it shows a lot of the research you guys have been doing and that we're hearing people with their opinions and how diametrically opposed they are. So I, I think it's an excellent slide personally. I agree. Okay, so we'll, we'll keep that. And real time, we'll solicit more opinions. And <laughs> I have to duck when we do that. Okay, so onto the question and it's, uh, there have been suggestions for rewording this, but I'd rather leave it pretty much the way it was before because I don't want to have a moving target. So the, the basic question is, with option two, do we add this paragraph to this? So we're showing three things here. We're showing what it would be without the restrictions, what it was, and what it would be with the restrictions, adding that. That was the cleanest way I could think of to show all three things. That's that's the purse. That's the purpose of that. So what about a third option? Of, oh. I know, I know, but a third <laughs> option that would be because it's it's come up, right? And I yeah. think we need to acknowledge it. That would be uh, option three would be residents each resident has a vote up to two persons from a non-resident property or business owners have a vote i thought we just decided that that wasn't what we wanted to do i'm just well it's <laughs> there was disagreement right and and it would be allowing people to feel heard that have expressed this one quite emotionally in some cases that that you know that whether or not we agree with that uh, position, it isn't. It's it's something that when we go into the feedback sessions would allow us to take a vote, a poll, have polls ready on that position, and and show that we've listened. Right. Okay. Well, if we have three options, then it's not an up or down because you're liable not to get a majority anywhere. That's uh, true. So okay. if okay. we have three options. It would be a option one, two option votes. two, option three, and people would have to pick one. Pick one, yes. And then when the dust settles and there's not a majority, then the top two then get voted on again. Is that the way it would work? Sure, sure. Well, what we could do is say option one versus option two, <laughs> and then have a vote. If option one gets voted yes, then we don't have another vote. Um, and then on option two, we would have the split vote on whether it's all, re you know, any resident gets a vote and then the distinctions. We'll have to think about that. I, I need I need some clarification. Are you talking about uh, the May uh, acceptance of the committee's work or are you talking no. about something? The feedbacks, between? the feedback oh, okay, session. Okay, then I, you know, we need to have, I think, a pretty clear idea of what they want. And if it's three options, if 
if it's four options, okay. we need to hear about them. And then at some point, we ultimately have to bite the bullet and make the choice. Right. Okay. So it would be, it would just be giving us data. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that most people are going to vote for the proposed either option one or the first option two, but we've got four options. We could do. Okay. So that highlighted bullet there says if we single out uh, residents as being accepted, they may want to say, well, residents should be restricted. Nobody else should. That's what right. this says to me. Right. So that's four options. That's, that's possible. We need to... um, the other thing, though, is that we've also heard data that whether it's true or not, that 70% of the property owners are non-residents. So in a way, non-residents are already outnumber residents. So, you know, we're hearing a lot, <laughs> these different things. But yes, we could do four options if you wanted to, Tom. I don't want to. No. Okay. <laughs> okay. I want to do two options. Two. <laughs> okay. Uh, what do you guys think? Am I just being off base here about uh, the yeah, third option? Take it down. Do people think that we need three options here? I do. So we anyone can else? I'm happy with the two options personally. I mean, I think we're making things more complex than they need to be at this point. Well, but complexifying also encourages discussion on the parts of uh, our visitors. Yeah, I, I, I do understand that. Yeah. And I really, mm -hmm. want, I, I really want, because we're not, we're not settled here. Uh, and, uh, yeah. and I'm certainly not. I mean, you, you know, my situation with the, with the 12 owners and, and yet my personal choice is uh, two votes. I, I, I think that's plenty. I mean, you know, uh, because this is, this is ultimately going to be recommendations and advice to the county. Okay. And then at the last meeting, they brought up that uh, in the feedback session, and I should say that there are some properties that have multiple homes on them. Yeah, so in this true. option mm -hmm. two, are we going by street address, tax lot number? I mean, if there are five homes on one parcel, is this restricting those five homes that are, say, 10 residents to just yeah. two people because it's one property? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is a that is a point that Tom made about the definitions. Uh, we may need to have a property definition as well as a property owner. Well, can we go back to that uh, other slide, Tom? Okay. Here's here's something that you should consider, and this is the example that haunts me. Which two residents of the RV park are going to be able to vote? <laughs> well, I, well, technically, nobody who lives there except for the owners uh, votes. In my case, they're residents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, not legally. But, uh, so I, I, I'd like to hear from Tom. Residents legally. I'd Tom, like to hear residents Tom. under the, yeah, let's, the definition let's, of the Oregon statute. Tom Prahadic has his name, uh, his hand up, and I, I really think we need to make an exception for Tom because he's put a lot of effort into communicating with us on this. So go ahead, Tom. Yeah, I, in the in the Tom treatise that I sent out yesterday, because <laughs> uh, that's what it is, uh, I argue for option two, uh, although I've still got an open mind, but set that aside to why it's questioned. That's why you need a definition of property. It needs to be a single dwelling unit, and that's defined by the county and the STR rules. Just take the first sentence or two of that. Say it's, it's a it's a living area that has certain things like a, a, a cooking area, uh, living space, etc. And for undeveloped, and the thing that Tom pointed out, the better Tom, the thing that he pointed out. <laughs> yesterday was that that doesn't that I, I left out undeveloped land and that has to be included but that can be that can be handled so if you it, i mean the pro this 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 problem may exist in a number of places including the condos and uh where the hotel used to be and in proposal rock 
or as I understand it, the, the, the address, they have one address, or at least somebody brought that up during the feedback discussion. And so you, you need to establish that even if they're at the same address, they, if they have, if they live in a single uh, uh, d separable dwelling unit, they have a vote. And so you, you need to define property. You also need to define property because of the blue, the blue line that or the blue uh, uh, heading of property. That word needs to be defined. Okay, um, good point, Tom and, and, and Wyatt. The one thing I'll, what, what, I'll very, very quickly, uh, the def the definitions need work. Um, that's one that's one place. And th this is not this is not Tom's fault. It's it, it's uh, Tom S's fault. It, it's complicated. Uh, but I'll, I'll leave that general comment to uh, to public comments. OK, so, thank you. So I have a way forward. So I, along the lines uh, that you mentioned, Nancy, we can have a should they be restricted or not. And then if we get a should be restricted, then we can go into the various options for restriction. Yeah, I like that. I think we could have a poll ready for any of those situations and uh, we okay. could get together and talk about the the poll questions. But I, I think that's the big thing is should they or not be restricted or not first. Yeah, uh, so I like that. Uh, Bill Bush has some comments in here too. The owner of the RV park lives in the Seattle area. The park has a full-time manager who used to regularly attend CAC meetings. Interesting. Uh, the Slab Creek properties that share a common street address are all on separate tax lots. They could put their tax lot information in. So that's a good point too. That's interesting. So even though they share a common street address, that's good to know. That's really huge actually. Um, good. That makes more sense, and that's the true with uh, with undeveloped properties also that they they have uh, tax lots. So I'm going to make this. Uh, I'll restructure this to be option one is no restriction. Option two is put some restriction, and then we'll put out the various kinds of restrictions. That sounds see. great. Okay, so I like that. Okay, fair enough. And uh, then. Um, you and Wyatt and and Tom uh, too can work together on definitions. Does that sound okay? Yeah, it's yeah. I'm way out of. <laughs> I'm glad, glad he agrees because I'm way out of my depth in terms of legal stuff. Okay, uh, okay, that sounds yeah. good. I, don't I know. Think I know enough to a, know that's that not I'm a criteria, agree. Tom. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, <laughs> and and in some cases, being a layperson can be helpful Absolutely. in making sure it's readable. So. And Tom, Tom too, and uh, and Wyatt are both lawyers. So Tom, Tom, why do you? I'm in the minority here. Right? Neither, neither Oregon lawyers though. But <laughs> the, the but one thing, the one thing, if if we're going to do this and try to clean up the definitions, let's have a let's have a Zoom meeting or a conference call to do it. If that doesn't violate public meeting law, uh, the three of us or we'll get on the phone rather than the, the email three of you can do it. The three yeah, of you three can, of us do, can it. do it. Rather than um, I can't join you, but the three of you can do it, okay. and then Rather I can record that. Back and forth. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Let's do that. And uh, and we'll if you'd like me out. to help you set up the Zoom meeting, um, I can do that with our can, NCAC I can do, Zoom. I can do you that. You can do it. Okay. Okay. So uh, let's see. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this has been moved off to and in a probably modified uh, version uh, off to uh, meetings. Yeah, so I think if you're going to present that at the feedback session, the membership one will have already, or the meeting one will have already happened. If you could just right. either take the wording out entirely, just note it's moved, or to put in the meeting the wording that we were suggesting. I would rather just leave it that way. Just this is a straight comparison. And it's I'm going to spend about 15 seconds on this, explaining that it's somewhere else now. Uh, uh, could you I at least to... note that it's changed? Okay. 
Thanks. I just don't want people to be confused that this is wording we're still leaving in. Uh, I think, yeah. Okay. Well, I'll add something else. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. I'll add that. Thank you. Uh, this is the access text, which we just basically shortened. Uh, is available on the website rather than available to members, not saying how, and also be posted. That was redundant, so we just eliminated that. Yeah, and I think as a committee, we all agreed with that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, no change to this. Yay. <laughs> um, discussion of funding moved to Article X. Mm -hmm. Article 10. Um, I really love the folksiness of that. <laughs> yep. Um, so, and then what else is in this is basically the original and we'll now have to figure out how I'll have to figure out what the recommended change that's if. I'll have to figure that out, but this will be, I won't be able to show the committee one. It's actually fairly short for as controversial as it is. Uh, but I do intend to add the plain text, what a resident is. I think that'll be useful. And okay. also the reference off. Okay. okay. And that's that. I've shown that. All right. Any I have, a, uh, I have discussions? Yeah, I do have discussion on that last map. Um, why are we showing the zip code boundary and not the Nesquan community boundary, which is a hard and fast Defined boundary is, according to Sarah. Yes, this is one of the few maps that I did not do. I would not have had the zip code map. I, the, there was a fan of zip codes, and zip codes, unfortunately, are a slippery slope and very difficult to to deal with. So I think a zip code map is a bad idea. Uh, I will do what I can to produce the map without the zip codes. I think that's probably that's appropriate. I'd also like to suggest that we include, it could be a separate map, what the defined Nesquant community boundary is according to Tillamook County. I, I can do that easily. Uh, it, it will, it'll auto shade when you select mm -hmm. it. So I'll have that shaded, you know, that, that's, that's easily done. Assuming I can superimpose the two maps, I'll do my best, but you might wind up seeing this. <laughs> With apologies. Okay, anything else? Okay, uh, realizing that there are a few significant um, it, uh, things that we've discussed here, do you guys feel comfortable having this go to the feedback sessions with the um, with the discussion? I mean, with, with a, a number of these comments included? I do. Mm -hmm. Everybody? Okay, so uh, could we have a, a motion to that effect? Uh, I moved it uh, as amended. Uh, we present this for our next feedback session number two on meetings. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All those, all those in favor? Oh, well, Bill Bush has a discussion. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and look at, oh, Bill Bush, did you want to comment? Just this isn't necessarily related to the boat, but that map that you're showing is just something that came about while I was still just comparing areas. You can download a Nesquan watershed map, a map that is drawn up by the USGS, and you can show the same area with the township and range section information. And I thought that I had sent that to Tom and Wyatt before. Uh, you may have. I I missed it. If you did, uh, yeah, I didn't. Will. I can send it again. All you'll see is just the line around the watershed. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Bill. Okay. Um, so all those. To, in... We need to add the. Uh, 
the, the community boundary. I think good reference. Yes. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I think that's important. All right. Uh, thank you. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to uh, put the article three with revisions as we've discussed today to the feedback session number two, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say no. Motion carries. Thank you. And while we're at it, we didn't do that for our Article Five. Um, all those in are. Can we have a motion to send to the feedback session Article Five as uh, amended in today's meeting? So moved, Nancy. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor of sending Article Five meetings to the feedback session tomorrow, please say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say no. Okay. Uh, any abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, we've made some progress. I don't think we're gonna have time for reviewing article four. It's already 12.05, but please look in the uh, folder uh, at the revised article four and let me know if you have any issues with it. And we'll go ahead and do a motion to uh, update the, well, we could go to it really fast. There aren't that many things, but it's already 12.05, so let's not. Uh, but then Tom will be able to uh, update the article in the at our after our next meeting in the, the bylaws version. So I think that's it. Um, in terms of reviewing and updating the project plan, basically we're moving and uh, we're going to be having feedback sessions that we discussed earlier before our next meeting. At our next meeting, I'd like to talk about the updates from the feedback sessions related to updating any of those by bylaws articles and going forward. And then I think we just have um, articles seven and 10 to talk about in the next meeting. These, uh, and, uh, and then we'll go forward. So um, thank you all. Uh, our next meeting is on the 15th of March right here. And I uh, if there are no other comments, I'm going to go to public comment. Okay. Uh, who would like to speak from our guest today? Go ahead and hey. hold up. <laughs> would anyone like to speak in public comment today? Yeah, I'd like to uh, join in. I've just got a few quick comments. First, hey, I, agree Roger. With, I agree with Barbara on the emergency meetings. I don't think that the NCAC has to worry about uh, emergency meetings with natural or any other kind of disasters since we have the South County Emergency Volunteer Corps, the Medical Reserve Corps, and CERT, which uh, are all involved in medical emergencies and have much better communications and emergency communications. So I don't think that should even be an issue. When it comes to the quorum, I actually think 15 is too low and I say that because I think a lot of distrust in, in some of the previous uh, decisions by the uh, NCAC has come about when there have been really uh, very few members at, at a meeting. And if, if we have 200 members, I, I think that 15, in my opinion, is too low. When it comes to how to define a business owner, I think property uh, having a property site in Nesquan is very important. Otherwise, anybody who does business within the state of Oregon could, yeah, could claim that they're they're a business owner in in Nesquan. That could that could include contractors from all around the state. So I think that has to be be limited. And when it comes to the addresses in uh, a place like uh, uh, proposal rock, the addresses are all different just by virtue of their unit number, even though they have the same property address, all the addresses are actually different. I mean, we have the same thing in our condo uh, unit in Portland. My major concern is, is again, I'll get back to my same uh, uh, topic that I've discussed before. One thing that bothered me is with the last uh, a session when Sarah was uh, there and we discussed membership, I asked her one question that I did not get answered, and that is, do the recommendations from the NCAC on land use issues and other issues, when they're sent to the commissioners, do they apply only to the 
official NESCO and community boundary. It's my understanding that they do. Uh, Sarah told us that initially. And that to me is a huge, huge point because I do not think people should be deciding land use issues for people uh, when they do not apply to themselves. It's rules for thee and not for me. And uh, so I think that's a question that she has to answer in front of the whole uh, NCAC body. And I'm totally shocked. Did I hear you correctly that our votes have to be linked to our name? Uh, that Yes. I was surprised the county council said, yes, the votes have to be linked to names, even for elections. I, I, I thought that all, all ballots were private in the United States. And I think that's... A, horrible in a small community like this because even if I if my neighbor is running for a office in the NCAC and even if I think he's a really nice guy and would make a horrible officer I mean I'm in a you're in a horrible position when you're voting that's one of the things that I really hated about the NCAC when we met and voted with hand voting because it's almost like mob it's intimidating rule. it's yeah. Mob rule. yeah it's intimidating and you you really can't voice your 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 opinion your private opinion i i just find that hard to believe and i'd love if tom or one of the any other lawyer could weigh in on that because it just seems horrible to me. That's about all I have to say today. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for your comments, Tom. And um, there will be another membership uh, meeting, of course, on the 8th. And so uh, Sarah will be back for that one. You can ask her your question. Um, I certainly made the case in the email uh, that we, we hoped for privacy availability uh, for that very reason and was told no. So um, I did go into the into the actual law for Oregon for documents and, and meetings for a different issue and which was people's contact information. And that was very clear that that can be an exemption. Um, I, I'm gonna go back and, and look at voting, but uh, but he did come back quite, quite clearly saying we could not keep that confidential. So um, thank you for your comments. Uh, who would like to comment next? Anybody? I, I will unless unless Bill wants to talk. Um, yeah, I, to, to begin well, to begin with, Susan, we're all wishing wishing we were in Copenhagen. Uh, the the weather here on March the first is not very inviting. <laughs> um, the uh, I agree with Tom to begin with about public ballots. That that does not make sense to me. I would I would challenge that. Yeah. Um, that that they know who voted that I I can understand, but that you you had to be registered to vote, but that they know how you voted that just seems inimical to 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 uh, uh, I absolutely agree with Roger. It's, it's he sometimes says I'm surprised to 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 say that I agree with Tom. I agree with him, and I also agree with him about bus his statement about business owners. Um, they should they they should own property here. They have should have property here. Um, I won't belabor the fact that I at least as of yesterday favored option two and gave you many reasons in my treatise as to why uh, why it, it may convince me otherwise and other people may convince me otherwise. But I I think that option two is the most democratic, fair, and equitable given the history of the NCAC, who was supposed to be a part of the NCAC, what the ex expectations were in being a part of the NCAC and who could vote. And um, I don't think that there are gonna be very many residents that are cut that are cut out, if any, because I don't know that this has ever happened, that are gonna be cut out by a two vote maximum uh, and I think you're going to have a two-vote back maximum. It 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 ought to apply to all the categories in the same way, for the for all the reasons that I gave. The problem now I think is definitional, 
And uh, I'm a full-time resident, but notwithstanding that, there are many vacation homes and, and there are some full-time residences that are in trust or LLCs. And I don't think the definition, the definitions either for um, uh, property owners who are not residents and business owners uh, quite captures who can vote on behalf of trust or LLCs or corporations or partnerships. And that's something we need to work on. But we're, as I said, it's not horrible. You're de the, you, you did read this comment, Tom. Somebody said, I think Tom said, my definitions are horrible. I don't think they're horrible. They're getting there. If if option two were the one that was chosen, so we'll work on that. Okay, thank you, Tom. Um, and I'm going to send Tom's uh, or Tom Sipe can uh, put uh, your comments in the member comments section too, so that the rest of the committee and public can read it. We'll redact your contact information. Do you want to do that, Tom Sipe, or do you want me to? Uh, I think I'm busy. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Thank you. Um, Bill Bush. And did you want to say anything? And Barbara's gone, I guess. But I don't have any comments. Okay. Other you, than Bill. I agree that uh, even in the old days, voting by hand could be intimidating. I mean, there were times that I might have held a minority opinion and just sat down because I didn't want to be the sole person to raise my hand. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you all for hanging in there once again for a very long, but I think very productive meeting. Um, I very much appreciate all the efforts both our committee members and our and other members are are doing on this effort. So we will hopefully see you all at tomorrow's feedback session at two o'clock uh, on Article Five meetings and Wednesday for Article Six on executive boards. So thank you all. Uh, meeting adjourned. I'm going to start at 12 20, 12 17. I'm going to stop recording. Yeah, can, can I ask a question very quickly? Oh, sure. Do we, we have a meeting on we don't have a meeting this next Wednesday on executive boards. It's the meeting. It's it's you are correct. Let me and, look at I, I, I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking <laughs> that something must have changed because you're allowing yourself like a Five day break. <laughs> yes, our next. Thank we you earned for it. The clarification. You're, you're yes. allowing you're allowing Roger and me a, a six day break too. That's right. You guys are That's a bunch right. of slackers taking. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so tomorrow and then the eighth, the eighth to talk about okay. uh, something. I think it's it's our whatever whatever it is whatever it is <laughs> schedules on the site. All right. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, now I'm going to stop recording. Meeting adjourned at 1217 still. <laughs>